There we go. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari 2600 and 7800 games. And today, we're going to stay true to that statement. <laughs> this is the newest Atari 2600 game for sure. Uh, with us, we have Audacity Games and the world premiere, exclusive world premiere of Circus Convoy. Very excited. Very excited. Waiting a long time for this. <laughs> and without further, further ado, I'd like to introduce and bring on our very special guests, uh, David Crane, who you know, of course, legendary, uh, from 2600 games such as Dragster, Freeway, Grand Prix, Pitfall, Pitfall 2, that's just on the Atari 2600. And uh, also Gary Kitchen, who made 2600 games such as Donkey Kong, Keystone Capers, Pressure Cooker, and Dan Kitchen, who made games for the 2600 such as Crackpots, Ghostbusters, and Kung Fu Master. And all three have created hundreds of classic games for numerous systems over the decades. So please welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, David Crane, Gary Kitchen, and Dan Kitchen. Let me switch it over. There we go. Welcome, gentlemen. Hello. Hi. There we have Hello. Sam. Hello. We have video. Hi, Excellent. Can you hear all of us? Oh, uh, we can. I, yeah. 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 Volumes are good. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks. Technology. Sometimes it works. <laughs> Sometimes. It Sometimes. Works. Very rarely. <laughs> so, I mean, I I've been. Uh, beta testing this game for you guys and i've been having to keep this secret to myself well, i've told her um <laughs> for months now i can't imagine like you guys having to keep it under wrap for years how long has this game been in development and how long has the company kind of been in development as well well there were really two parallel paths going um dave and i Started, I'll let Dave say how long ago, but quite a while ago. <laughs> and then Dan independently started on his side with Keystone Cannonball. And it's actually amazing that there was a lot of work going on on two different coasts. And people have pointed out a lot of the creative similarities between what we did and what Dan did. And when we figured out that we were all going for the same thing and we would all need the same infrastructure, we right. decided to throw everybody into one ring and do it <laughs> like the old days. So um, we took the game that Dave and I had been working on forever. And... Um, it so happened that one was further along because we've been working on it longer, though we had never discussed it, so it's a surprise to everyone. Right. Not publicly. And Dan has been talking about... Dan's been about... talking about his. Yeah. So, Dave, yeah. when do you figure we started? Well, this whole process is more than three years in the making um, because wow. it's not just a game. It's an entire publishing company. It's tons of new technology that you've never seen before in a 2600 game. Um, the only way to do it, I mean, what we really wanted to do is make boxed games that you can hold in your hand and put in your collection. Um, unlike a lot of our games, we've done hundreds of games that can no longer be played because they were done online or they were, you know, downloads. You know, you could buy an iPhone game today and next week, you know, end up getting a new operating system upgrade and all of a sudden the game doesn't play anymore. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we wanted to make the physical game, which means we had to make a cartridge and injection molding and boxes and manuals and labels and, <laughs> you know, all the other physical things that had to go into it. And yeah, everything a company does for the developers, right? right? right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, pretty soon you're going to see we have an entire um, online portal that connects the games to the players and um, another big deal all of which had to be developed. So not to mention tools to develop 2,600 games, which we don't have anymore. Um, so, you know, it's like if you make a game today, you get out Photoshop and you draw a picture. 
Well, you don't do that for the Atari 2600. Yeah. So I was, I was working on a tool two years ago on an airplane to Brazil when I was going to speak at a conference and I was developing <laughs> uh, graphics development tools. So it's been more than three years to get to the point we are today. Wow. Yeah, it, I, I've seen a number of games come from development like that. So it's, it's kind of like what, what came first, the development tools or the game. But I, I'm guessing the game, the idea of the game came first. And then you're like, how are we going to make this game? It's very much in parallel. Um, in parallel. Yeah. You know, to make the kind of graphics that you see, you know, the snake, the uh, the clowns, the, the things right. that really, you know, graphics They're like very that, special. Graphics like right? that very... really are rarely seen on the Atari 2600. Yeah, huge, huge graphics, right? You just don't see them. They're always like, you know, eight or you double it, you know, 16 pixels wide. Yeah. Yeah, and the only way to do that was to create a custom tool. Um, that tool also exports the graphics in parallel in NTSC and PAL. So one of the other features mm. so that we can sell this, you know, to the European market as well. Um, you jumped on that question. Somebody had that one for sure. Are they going to be released in PAL? Are they going to be PAL 60 or 50? Let's, let's say that. Well, we are going to release them in PAL. Um, and we have to apologize in advance what shipping costs to Europe. It's insane. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe sometime down the road, we'll be able to figure out a better way to do that. But um, yes, we definitely want to support PAL as well. Um, just looking back to what the state of uh, video game development for the 2600 is right now. It's, it's, it's called Homebrew. And that, as we know, it kind of encompasses anything made after, you know... 1992, the discontinuation of uh, the Atari 2600 in retail stores. Um, so what what do you consider this new game, Circus Convoy? Well, it's not homebrew. what you're doing. <laughs> it's not homebrew. I mean, yeah, because that's that I'm question sorry. has come up a number of times. Like, it, what what are they calling it? What does it come under? Is it homebrew? Is it because you guys? You guys are literally, I, I asked many times over a number of years, as soon as Dan started talking about the new game, has anybody that made 2,600 games from 77 to 92 made a new 2,600 game? And nobody has come up with one example well, of anybody making a new game. So Rob you're Fulop, the only guys. Rob Fulop sold a yep. game years ago. Sold about 100 copies, I think. But I think it was a game that he had in development that he finished. Exactly. I don't think it was the yeah. game development. Right. I can tell you this much. I can guarantee you that no one has spent the money that we, we have spent <laughs> to make this undertaking. Right. Just to let the audience know, we'll probably have to sell a million units to break even. So we're hoping. <laughs> so get uh, on it, people out there. <laughs> we're hoping for big coverage with this show because... Yeah, it's special yeah. for a thousand at a time. I mean, it's, yes, and we honestly <laughs> bulk discounts. Yes, yes. <laughs> but we did spend a lot of time and money on it. It was a labor of love. I mean, we yeah. decided we want to do it, and we knew if we did it half-assed, it would disappoint. So yeah. we had a bar we had to hit, and that's yeah. incredibly motivating. And we we, we we love homebrew. I mean, I think it's great that people who've never done it before. Um, figure out how to do uh, work on the 2600 and and draw the pixel art and you know put together some some games but I think the definition is we are a retro game publishing company right and homebrew is somebody at home I think that's really the biggest difference in my opinion so we have made the publishing company to be premium everything that we're doing we're doing as well or better than activision did in the 1980s uh, you'll see that when you see some of the um additions that we've you know things that we've added to the game things we've put into the collector editions and and even the vip edition etc i mean we've put a lot of effort into doing it right yeah and i mean i would venture we're probably the first people to go back to tooling of a new case, new plastic, and 
run new injection molded plastic cartridges. I think everybody has relied on recycling and tearing off yeah. labels and whatever. But we decided this isn't just a one-off game. This is a business. Yeah. So we made the investment. Yeah. New circuit. Yeah. 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 And we'll get into that. Yeah. The hardware behind it. Yeah. De definitely on mass yeah. producing yeah. 2,600 cartridges. There's been, you know, small runs and stuff, but there's nowhere that you can just say, I want to get a thousand cartridges. Uh, it's shells for the 2,600. Um, when did you guys become aware of homebrew? for the 2600 was because you go to the conventions all the time. Oh yeah. You speak at conventions. So you must've been aware of it early, early on. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I don't remember exactly when, but yeah. quite a few years ago. Yeah. It's quite a few years. Yeah. And I mean, homebrew, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the homebrew. Homebrew kept the system alive and made yeah. people interested in it. And we, it's wonderful. The things that have been done in homebrew to keep the machine alive. It's one of our favorite systems and, Certainly, it's become a favorite for a lot of people, and you know we're very, very happy that they took the step forward a number of years ago. I think John Champo told me I think it's like 15 years he's been playing with homebrew. Is that about right? That sounds about right he's for writing him. Writing something, I, I think about 15 years ago. It's a yeah, and I think it's been about 25 total. Oh, 25 I think it was 90, 95 was the first uh, game released. I think it was Ed Tris. Oh, okay. A, a Tetris clone, of course, Yeah. for the 2600. Yeah. That's wonderful Dave, work that's been done. There's a question on the chat over here, very important. They want to know if you use oh, yeah. the right type of glue for the label. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course. Is it going to get Actiplac? Right. Will the well, Audacity we'll, Games 30 years from now? We'll well, check with us in 40 years. <laughs> looking bubbly label. I can guarantee you that something will go wrong within 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a guarantee. Yep. That's funny. Yeah, because you don't you don't know. Yeah. You know, they weren't they weren't made to 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 weather 30, 40 years. They're you know, a company's not thinking ahead. Well, how would how would you even know is really the question. When we were at Activision, yes. we went out to a supplier who printed sticky labels <laughs> and we bought sticky labels. Right. You know, you don't go in there and say, gee, these might be you know, still being used 40 years from now, can you guys make absolutely sure and military grade test them to make sure that works? I had no idea what the glue was. <laughs> exactly. It was glue. It stuck. End of story. Right. Yep. That was it. And you know, to, to, us, to what Gary said, uh, we're a company, it's not a one-off. So we're, we're releasing Circus yeah. Convoy. Uh, Casey's yeah. Gold will be next. And we have other yeah. products that we're going to be creating, you know, onward. Um, yeah, and possibly for other retro systems. So, oh, yeah. certainly yes. business that we're excited to pursue and we love. Yeah. As long as and, you guys and, continue to support us, we will continue to make games. Right. Yeah, as long oh, as that's demand. excellent. I mean, yeah. people asked about seventy eight hundred. They asked about Jaguar. Right. They asked about Commodore sixty four. You know, really has to come down to: is there a reasonable market? Yeah. Commodore 64 you know, is pretty big. We'll sell three uh, or the four other ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, we don't want to make it not sell any of them. Yeah. And we're thinking yeah, exactly. about going back to LPs too, because I actually <laughs> think this is very. Those have gotten big. This yeah, is actually yeah. very analogous to right to a musician saying, "I'm going to put is. out an LP." Damn yeah, the it's fact physical, that there's physical media. Hardware right? is old. I'm going yeah. back to the old media because that's what people love, and that's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. yeah. And and I think it's only fitting that you guys are the ones to come back from the old school and form a new company making new games because Activision, co-founded by by David Crane, was the first third party publisher. Right. It, it's to make games like before that it was made by the original, uh, the original company, first party first party software. So it's, it's only fitting that you would come back and you know so be the, the ones to do it. First party, third party publisher <laughs> for the time after everyone else left. We've done, right. done it again. Done it again for the second time. For the second time. For the first and the 90th, publisher. but there's only two now. That's yeah. right. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, D Train asked uh, from the Atari Age forums, what prompted you guys to jump into the pool at this point? What was what was the the thing that said that that made you go? 
now now is the time was it an idea for the game or was just you saw the community and the support was there well you know we speak at these shows and i can't tell you how many times people have asked me to do it and right. in fact i've had long discussions with people over the last three years while i was actually doing it and couldn't talk about it <laughs> um, yes but yeah it was just just a very simple matter we love the 2600 we always have um, you know, we like to dabble in games. None of us really like the idea of being involved in a hundred person team, making a game that right. takes five years to be made. We have the skills to do the art, the programming, you know, all of the support stuff. I mean, the three of us that you're looking at, we are the entire company. We created <laughs> uh, an entire company an entire back end, an entire web, web portal and, and databases and everything that you see. Um, so it's just like the old days where you have a lot of different skills in one or two bodies or two or three bodies in this case, and you, um, you get to do everything, wear every hat. Yeah, yeah, it, just like the old days. And, and that's how homebrew is now, like making new games. It's people who, who have an idea and they they follow through their idea to the end. There's no committee meetings and <laughs> things like that, which which usually makes it a little bit better. Somebody has a, a vision for it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the big question is: any other Activision designers such as Steve Cartwright, Bob Whitehead, etc., looking to possibly make games under Audacity Games with you guys? R.J. Edwards seventy asks. It's certainly the plan. We've had a couple of discussions. We've had more than a couple of people express interest, saying, wow, uh -huh. wow, I'd love to do that. I've always wanted to do that. But it's hard to do it one person. It's hard to solve the issues of plastic and you know, yeah. circuit boards. I mean, it's a lot of work for one person to do, right, Dave? So, <laughs> you know, it, it's... it's um, but yes, we're having discussions. We certainly plan on bringing on more of the world's best designers from the retro days. And, and you've set it up to make it easy for them. You've set it up so that there's an infrastructure for the boards, the packaging. You've, you, you're proving the point by putting out Circus Convoy and saying it can be done easily. We can make, yeah, we have we can make entire, it happen, happen for you. Entire suite of technology that drops right in to somebody who comes in and wants to do a new game. They've got yeah. this amazing high score posting that Dave did where you don't even, I mean, it's magic. It's so cool that it, it posts high scores right to your account. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah. And that sort that's of thing, awesome. just um, for someone who wants to do it, it's, it's such a difference. It's one of the reasons why Dan got yeah. involved because We'd invested so much time in that stuff. He immediately recognized, hey, this is stuff I'm not going to have to build separately. And it's great quality work. Yeah. yeah it's amazing. And uh, speaking of that, let's open it up. Let's what do take you got a look. There? It's a package <laughs> from you guys. This is very exciting. So this, I wanted to do it on the show because people like unboxings. It's, uh, it's, like, it's like you're there, except it takes a little... There's when you pull it out, tab. be careful. The ink's still wet on the box. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I'll Dan, be you didn't send him that blow up doll, did you? No, <laughs> no, no. Self inflating, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. I'll, I'll watch out for that one. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, my oh. goodness. Okay, so maybe you want to talk about the different packages that can be purchased with Circus Convoy, because there's Dave. different Talk levels, about the tiers. right? All right, well, we're talking about tiers, and in discussing the tiers, we'll address the elephant in the room, which is the pricing. Right. Um, we're, we're basically providing three different ways to, to get involved with this game. We have the basic game, which we sell for $60. It has all of the interesting technology, the high score stuff that Gary was talking about. Um, it's done in a collectible box manual and um, you know it's basically everything that you would want in a 2600 game for at the basic level which is the $60 price point but yeah you know when it comes to pricing 
if, if you look at a $60 price and you say, that's too much, that tells me that you're one of those guys who is a collector, who likes, hasn't played all the games, and so likes to go out to thrift shops and buy them for $10 and, and get to play a new game they've never played before. And that's great. I'm, you know, more power to you until you've played all those games. But <laughs> yes. the reason you can buy that in a thrift store for $10 is because it, um, it was purchased by someone else when it was brand new. And then they ended up, they're done with it and they send it off. So um, when Pitfall and Keystone Capers were sold in 1982-ish, uh, they were suggested retail was thirty nine ninety five, and I got to mm. tell you guys, inflation is a real thing. And <laughs> yes. today, thirty nine ninety five in nineteen eighty two is one hundred and seven dollars in today's dollars. So therefore, so therefore, it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> well, and then so our collectible tier, which is the middle one, um, <clears throat> is at ninety nine dollars right now, and it. Um, it has a lot of other cool stuff in it. It's got uh, a poster and um, certificate of authenticity with a numbered hologram sticker on it to indicate what era. Yeah, why don't we hold that up? Oh, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's in there. It's in that. It's a certificate. Yep. Oh, and this manual is is not not the real manual. It's a test pressing. Right. So, the the real one looks awesome. So what you're seeing there, the certificate. Um, it has a space for the hologram. This is a this is a, a sample, so it it's not doesn't have the sticker on it yet. But um, yeah, the collector edition box has has a sticker on the outside of the box and also on the certificate. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things, but basically this <laughs> this is the tier that we think competes with Pitfall and Keystone Capers in in price. Well, the most important thing Dave didn't say is on the collector tier, <laughs> you're getting two games for the price of one. Well, because yeah. you're getting a downloadable version of the same game with the same serial number. So not only can right. you play with your cartridge, but you can play with emulators and you can play on Retron when you put it on a little SD card. So you're really right. buying two games for less than the price of two games, which we think is pretty good. On the um, chat, they're asking if you can get closer to the camera on a lot of these. It'll get blurrier as we get closer. Unfortunately, we can't adjust the uh, focus. It's, okay, so yeah, so we'll have to be a little we'll further away. Yeah. We'll, we'll show it after. We'll yeah. show it after. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, well, so there's, there's actually a third tier that we'll mention. Um, and the way right. I describe it is it's for the collector who has to have something nobody else has. And you guys right. know who you are. <laughs> and we are selling yeah. only 100 of those. Um, oh. And uh, so they'll go fast. And oh, yeah. they're being sold at $140. And you get a lot of other stuff with it. Lots of tchotchkes. And you saw that the little toy truck. Yeah. Um, belt buckle. Yeah, there's only 100 trucks. That's it. Yeah. There's only 100 belt yep. buckles. And when they're, and when they they're, when they're gone, convoy on you'll it. be the one who has them as the collector. Uh, right. And yeah. 100 hats. Custom hat. And oh, it custom comes hat. Oh. with the limited edition collector box is autographed on the front, uh -huh. along with yeah. also the frameable certificate or framed certificate. No. So that's a ton of extra stuff. Like, yes. That's... And, and signed and authenticated and everything. Yeah. And what we haven't even mentioned is there's a serial number to every game that is made. And the right. uh, VIPs get the first 100 serial numbers. The collector mm. edition get 101 to 2000. And the yeah. standards start at 2001. And we don't know how many of these we're going to sell, but we guarantee that we will only make 2000 of the collector edition. So right. when you, if you have number, you know, 174, you know, that's 174 out of 2000. It'll never right. be more than that. Right. So 100 of the VIP, 2000 of the collector, and then unlimited for the, the standard. Right. Yeah. Correct. Oh, that's excellent. And James was also holding up the thank you 
patch. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes. Now, I have only been able to get 61 of the stars so far in the game. <laughs> and I know, I know. But the game is vast, and there's so much to explore. And I know I've just scratched the surface of the game by the, by the number of stars. So, And you've got a patch, just like the old days, Activision patches. How many stars do you need to get to get this patch? Well, the patch that you're holding in your hand... Closer. The first 250 people who buy the game get one of those. It's okay. a thank you for supporting this new publishing company. Right. So you can get your first patch without having to score a single point. <laughs> There's incentive. <laughs> After that, we have committed to having club patches for every game. And very likely nice. we'll have two patches for every game, just like good old Laser Blast. Mm -hmm. Ah, the, the, the normal, normal achievement and then the elite achievement. That's right. So um, Circus Convoy has a club patch and a perfect score patch. Perfect score. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> I better get uh, practicing, mm -hmm. I guess. And then. to answer your question, uh, the club, club score is 40. Okay. So very approachable. 40 yeah, you know, people, it's very achievable. Yep. That's excellent. So I've already done it. But I have to prove it. <laughs> now, now, speaking of that, proving it. Now, how do you... You're not taking uh, photos of your TV anymore, are you? Not exactly. You can if you want, yeah. but you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> so some, can somebody take a photo and send it to you guys and that'll be proof enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> so one of the technologies that we've built into this game and all the games going forward is a QR code generator on the Atari 2600 screen. Right. Maybe we should pop in the cartridge so we can kind of... Because that's pretty important, you that QR that. code. That's, that's really impressive. You have an actual cartridge that works? He does have an actual cartridge. So, <laughs> God damn. Uh, here we go, everyone. This will be the uh, world premiere of the game, Circus Convoy. I'll get the uh, obnoxious blue screen up on the screen just so you can see it start up from from basics. <laughs> Here we go. Dave, I like the colors you've chosen for the blue screen. Though. Yeah, you thank you. You want to see that. You want to see something better. Oops. Hooray! Make sure it's sitting well. There we go. Let the little tune play. There we go. Excellent. Yeah, this now, being this being a circus, there's a calliope on the title screen, and it plays a little ditty of circus music. Um, for those of you who've listened to Gary and I talk at these shows, you know, the Gary tells of a story of how the music was made for um, Pressure Cooker. And the Atari, right, yes. The Atari Very 2600, without extra hardware like I put in Pitfall 2, has a limited number of tones that it can play that are in key, in tune. And so I actually <laughs> duplicated, I duplicated the thing Gary did in the, the 1980s and I took the Casio keyboard and I marked the keys that could be used uh, and I composed that little ditty so that we could use that same technique. But um, uh, that's just one of the fun things that you got to do when you're doing this stuff. And when, yeah. when they and, first showed that to me, I. I looked at him. I said, "That reminds me of the bouncing ball in Ghostbusters." Ah, uh, yes. Gary did the code for the bouncing ball. Is that correct, yes. Gary? Yeah. And yep, because yep. the little puffs of smoke come out at the right keys in the right little pipes. Yes, yes. Oh, right. in, in fact, the white and black keys actually go up and down. Oh, I was just going to mention that. That's yeah, it, for the eagle-eyed people, like you can well, see and the someone keys pointed being that played. out on the chat, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Details that the keys actually move. So now, yeah, if you they're on it, if you can control the game at this point, push the joystick to the left. Oh, yeah. There we go. So if you buy this in a store, the first screen you get is the title screen. You push to the left, and you get this QR code. You can scan that QR code in, and register the game to yourself. 
I'm pretty sure the game that you have is already registered to Dan, so don't even try to bother. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to think <laughs> about that. It's like, did I just screw myself? <laughs> See who on the internet gets there first. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This, is, this is an example of how QR codes can be used in this game. Wow. Um, now, if you go to the right and then tap to the right a second time, the you want to read the backstory on the website when it's live, which is very soon. Um, yeah. The character, the chameleon, has a whole story about, uh, you know, where he came from and such. He has multiple yeah. personas, and he plays as Andre the Magnificent in this game. In future games, the chameleon will play as different characters. The chameleon might change characters in the middle of the game through quick change booths or something like that too so ah. you know it's 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 well thought out for long-term use now i but, just wanted um, to i wanted to from, interject sorry from here you push push up on the stick and you'll be in the game okay. right so here's our hero he, like, ready to take on the game he climbs out of his the chameleon's trailer wait yeah. uh dan you were going to say something dan yeah, before you, you show the game, I just want everybody to know that. So this is this is written by, by Dave and Gary without any external hardware. It's written using right. only the 128 bytes of RAM in the Atari. And it's written oh, really? as if they wrote it at Activision in the back lab in 1982. We, as yeah. Dave can explain, we have more memory banks of ROM, but uh, people have asked online, you know, does it use the DPC chip? Is it using these various, right. you know, code processors? No, this is purely 6502 as if it was written in 1982 without any additional hardware or RAM support. That's incredibly impressive because there are, you know, Close bank switching away. techniques that give you like enormous amounts of memory. Yeah. And that's incredibly impressive. This is just uses the basic built in RAM built -in system. Yeah, I wanted people well, to know that. So they can understand and appreciate how amazing it is to see this now, knowing that this is simply the pure Atari 2600 running. Uh, go ahead, Dave. Well, ironically, yes, it, it's a large ROM. We made this 128K because, A, because we could, and B, because it's the smallest ROM I could buy in production quantities to build. <laughs> they don't make small yep. ROMs anymore. <laughs> you know it's no 4ks left oh. <laughs> you can't buy those anymore <laughs> funny oh wow so it, it was by by sheer force that you, you just had to make it that's this right. big but but also that allows for a, a very vast expansive game which is which is wonderful it's a full huge adventure game yeah there are it's entire 4k games that could have been sold in the 1980s inside this game oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, inside yeah. one of the trailers of one of the tractor trailers. <laughs> oh, yeah, because there's like games within games. Yes. There's mini yeah. games in mm -hmm. here. And there's, there's great nods to your previous games from I, I didn't from notice back any of those. Uh, that's yeah. purely coincidental. <laughs> purely coincidental. <laughs> yeah, I just, actually, just happened to be there. I actually, someone online watched the trailer and yeah. there were all these amazing comments and then this and everybody's commenting now, did you see the alligators? Did you, did you see the shopping cart? And some guy said, $60 for 30-year-old reused graphic? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. Good. Well, no, so to, can't please everyone. <laughs> so to continue so, the thought with the QR code, at this point, you should yes. hit game select. OK. So this is a the guide. Yes, yeah, so any time in the game, you can pause the game by hitting game select. And while you're paused, it gives you a QR code that you can scan in. And that goes to our web portal with all of the descriptions on it. Um, what, would be, what would happen if somebody did it right now? If somebody did it right now, they'll probably end up on the web portal, which isn't turned live yet. So right. We'll, we'll see what happens, but anyway. Um, so let's um, click out of that. So we do game select again. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we're so now, the game. hold the joystick down and press the button. That brings up the inventory screen, which is a scrolling inventory pop-up. It scrolls up from the bottom of the screen. And as you collect things, I mean, the star is always there, an empty fuel can, and no parachutes, because you're going to need a lot of those. They're kind of the defaults. Um, right. But as you pick up things, they show up in inventory. And you can click on them and invoke them in the game without ever really leaving the game. Yeah. But from that screen, if you click on the star, that is a status screen that we expect to be common to every game. Mm. And okay. one of the things that you see on there is the elapsed time of the game. One thing we've learned about games over the years is people like to speed run. Yes. So when you do submit your score, it submits the score for the game and the amount of time you spent. So you could have bragging rights over someone if you did a, the same score in five seconds less. Right. So somebody could get a perfect score, but somebody could beat that perfect score by getting less time. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So there's always yeah. a continual challenge. Mm -hmm. It never stops at just perfect. <laughs> there's perf more perfect than perfect. And on that screen <laughs> is your serial number. So this game is serial number 4981. Right. Okay. Which is, if I recall, I think that's registered to Dan. It is? Okay. Like, okay. I want that back, James. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I've misplaced it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so anyway, you press the red button and we're back in the game and you guys can do whatever you want to do with playing the game. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a bit more about the... Um, do you want me to go for it? Yeah, All right. Go for good. it. <laughs> Have fun. Um, and, and we can jump in with things that come on the screen. Um, so let's talk a bit more about the board, because you did show the board uh, in one of the teasers. And that's something that you're going to be offering for um, developers uh, for sale? Or is that somebody something for people that come on board Audacity to release their games? Well, I mean, you asked the question about homebrew. and. We love the homebrew people. We like to support the homebrew. And yeah. that's really what this is. Is until we did this, there was no place you could go to get injection molded plastic cartridges and circuit right. boards and all the things necessary. So on our website, in a couple weeks probably, we will start selling, um, you know, small quantities. Unless you're the actual manufacturer and you can buy them by the thousands they're not cheap but it's a lot yeah. better than the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars you have to spend to get to this point um <laughs> yeah so yeah we want to support support the homebrew that way yeah and so will you also be making like if somebody sends you a a rom uh you'll be making the chips and shipping out to them is that something that you're going to be offering as well or will they have to kind of uh supply their own ROMs to put on to populate the board? Um, we will sell one-time programmable EEPROMs to people who find it hard to find them or whatever. But otherwise, yeah. people who do homebrew tend to know how to put a uh, socket on a board and plug in an EEPROM and that sort of thing. So we don't expect to have to do that. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Carl G. asks, uh, how difficult of a transition was it to jump back to 6502 programming after uh, such a long absence? Or was there even an absence? Were you, you know, playing around here and there? I know you talk about it all the time at conferences, so it must be still in the front of your mind, most of it. Yeah, I mean, I have programmed products, published products in about 25 different computer programming languages. So, you know, I don't speak a lot of human languages, but I speak 25 computer languages, and I am still, I'm still fluent in 6502. I know which opcodes are which instructions at a glance, and I haven't forgotten any of that. So there was no transition whatsoever for that. No problem. Oh, and speaking of that, what were 
both of your all of your roles in producing this game so that people know who did what I was uh, collaborating with Dave Dave had uh, we have day jobs too so, so <laughs> yeah, at least this isn't my day up job till, <laughs> up till tomorrow who knows but it did but I was um, collaborating with Dave on the design and I did a good percentage of the art in the game. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Dave did all the code and all the technical. And obviously, he collaborated with me on the design, and he did some of the art. I did most most of the art. Um, right. And um, <laughs> I will definitely program in the next one. Uh, I'll, okay. But I was just incredibly busy during this whole stretch. And just to mm. tell you a funny 6502 story, I'm sure we have the time. Oh, yeah. Infinite time. <laughs> what There's I no do on, on, in my day job is a, a good part of it is I work as a technical consultant to attorneys in litigation. So if there's litigation, this guy says the other guy stole his game or his code or right. violated a patent... The court hires an expert to come in and explain what the hell's going on because nobody knows the technical side. So he can't believe what the attorneys mm. say because they're biased and he can't believe, he doesn't <laughs> know himself, the judge. Yeah. So they bring in experts and experts explain, here's what's going on. So a few years ago in that process, I got a call from a, a client. Oh, uh, do we want to stop for a second? At Anytime, point, yeah. If, if you see he something, reaches the front of the truck, Dave, to explain okay. that. I thought maybe sure. you can explain the um, format of the game, why you're at the front of a truck, right? And what you do <laughs> about it. All right. Well, I mean, the game is organized as trucks and convoys of trucks. So a truck is a cab like you see, um, and it has trailers attached to it. More and than one trailer. When you get to the last trailer in a truck, um, I mean, you know, you see trucks going by with two and three trailers behind them. Well, we have 20 or 30, but, you know, we just have good trucks. <laughs> really good trucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but when you get to the last trailer, um, there may or may not be a truck behind you. And if there is, you can, I say I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, well, I guess I'm not. If, if, <laughs> if there is another truck in your convoy, it's one screen away. And you actually can see it where you see the tail end of one truck and the, the, the cab of the other. This is actually the absolute front of the frontmost convoy. So you don't see right. anything in front. But if you run, took this all the way to the back end, um, you would see another cab. And you have to figure out what inventory items do I use to get from one truck to another in the convoy. Then, then there are other convoys. There are multiple convoys which are not one screen apart. And so you need to use some extraordinary means to get from that this truck to this convoy to that convoy, and uh, you can think of them as levels in a game. But right. you know you can go back and forth, so it's not exactly like levels. But um, anyway, so I don't want to give away too much because I think the fun in playing a game is learning and figuring out how to play it. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But it is organized as trucks, convoys, and. Well, trucks and groups of convoys, I guess, is the best way to say. And the whole reason I really prompted you is I'm very proud of that truck. Yes. For a yeah, it's, object. And not only that, a, it drives across the screen, which is even more yes. crazy. Wait till they see that. And that um, is, to me, there's nothing in the game except for the <laughs> QR code. There's nothing in the game besides the QR code, which is impressive as that truck driving. When you consider yeah. the device oh. you're on. So just to finish oh. the 6502 story, I got a call. Somebody said, we have a project. We have this really old code from a long time ago. No one knows what it is. 
<laughs> and you fly to San Diego. I had to fly to San Diego, go into a locked room under lock and key, a computer wow. not attached to the internet. This is all confidential stuff. And they voted it up and they said, look in that file. We have talked to dozens of people. Nobody has any idea what it is. So I clicked <laughs> the file, open it, and I just started laughing hysterically. And they're like, what? And I called Dave afterwards. I said it was 6502. And no, and no one knew what it was. Oh, and and what? they said, can you read that? <laughs> and I, what Dave said is I should have said, it's very complex. It'll take me quite a lot of time. To <laughs> but I said, sure, I can read it. So that was my six. Oh, oh look, we, we just figured out something. What, was it? what did you do? What did you I do? jumped from one convoy. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We gave too many. Gave a sneak preview here. We, you know, spoiler See, alert. We to Paris yeah. <laughs> to get from one yeah. truck to another and, truck. Yeah. We're, we're going to have to give away a tiny bit yep, on the show, that's dude. Okay. <laughs> a tiny. We won't. We won't play it too far. No. Yep. Yeah. We've already discussed made sure. that. A little yeah. Bit. yeah. <laughs> it's like we don't want to give away. We want lots of stuff left. Believe me, I, I, there's I, so much stuff yeah. in this game. We, there's, <laughs> if we give away 10%, it'll be a lot. Yeah. So to, um, to round out what Gary was saying, you know, at the time I was working on Gold Rush, which has since been changed to Casey's Gold, and uh, uh, I uh, came on while they were wrapping up the game to help with the marketing efforts, uh, getting the packages printed, getting the manual written and printed, getting all the tchotchkes put together. So on this game, I was able to come in and help with the marketing support and the physical goods that you'll get separate from the game cartridge. Um, and on Casey's Gold, I'm sure they'll jump in and help with audio and certain things. So if people watching are wondering, well, whatever happened to Dan after, you know, right around <laughs> Christmas or Thanksgiving time where he wasn't talking about Gold Rush anymore, um, I was <laughs> in working on this project with the guys, so uh, that that makes sense. So together, yeah, and that we explains your absence. That we needed Dan's marketing expertise, and neither right. of us had the time or the will. So that was part of the impetus to merge, because he had already done such a great job building up interest in uh, Casey's oh, yeah. gold. Uh, so. We said, look, you've, you've got a mailing list, you've got the people, you've got the connections. So he jumped in yep. and did the marketing side of this. So it was great. Oh, great. They had all the technology figured out. And, you know, I've worked with Gary and Dave many times in my life. Um, and I just love the opportunity to do it again. So, oh, so, could, you so just, here could you just, when you get a minute, go back to the screen with the burning skull? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yep. There's a story it's, around it's, the burning skull. Yeah, that one's a high jump, the, the burning skull. Yeah, it's a it's, tough it's, jump. It, it took me a lot of practice yeah. to, to get over that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I created that graphic, and I sent it to Dave. And Dave's immediate response was, what would fit in a circus? <laughs> <laughs> what, what the hell are you a burning skull for in a circus? And I told him that to me, a circus is very much like, um, if you remember Ray Bradbury, uh, something wicked this way comes. Yes. The traveling circus, it's eerie. It's scary. Right. You know, and it took some convincing. But, but I, <laughs> I finally got Dave to leave it in. I think that was Mr. Dark's pen. <laughs> Dave, you want to comment on that? Well, you know, there's there's two burning skulls. We haven't seen the other one yet, but yes, um, yeah, yeah. The other one's even yeah. better. <laughs> but De um, much deadlier. Much, much deadlier. deadlier. Yeah. <laughs> but I I put in a um, teleporting machine, you know, kind of out of the movie The Fly or what were those? Uh, um, there were two simultaneous magician movies. That right, right. Prestige, yes. prestige, 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 and yeah. um, The Illusionist. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so using, uh, kind of borrowing from that, I made them, um, they work as teleporters, but you don't know if it's going to kill you or if it's going to duplicate you or what it's going to do. And so just to make Gary happy so that he could put in his skull, I wrote into the backstory that those teleporters were confiscated from uh, a magic act that was killing the magicians. <laughs> so that's why they're under lock and key. 
Ah, you make ah it there you go. Is to find the right color key and unlock the trailer. Right. Um, so, you know, we had to tie it all in. But, yep. <laughs> you know, anytime you're doing 8-bit graphics, um, you can't just say, I want to do a, a skull or whatever until you try it and see if it actually looks like a skull. I can't tell you how many times some, you know, somebody has drawn something and told me what it is, and I said, it doesn't look like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. actually design the game around what graphics look good. Right. You know, sometimes you have to. I think yep. we actually yep. had one of the main obstacles on the surface of the top of the truck. We had it for about two years, and we finally <laughs> yeah. took it out and still could figure out what it was. But we kept <laughs> telling ourselves... What, what was it, like a bicycle? A, a kiddie's bicycle or something? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it was a three-wheel yeah. bicycle. And it, I could see, they could see, but, but my wife would walk in and go, that was that thing. <laughs> Two years of hearing yeah. that, we said, all right, we're taking it out. And and that's that's why it's good to have external input, yeah. beta testers, things like that, so people can, you know, point these things out that you think are obvious yes but I agree. Are, not, are not so obvious well here's our first uh first challenge <laughs> um, oh, first sideshow right. that yeah. they're called mm -hmm. and it's gator alley so what could be in here yeah what i just want to say well. i just want to say that the similarity between any game in the 1980s <laughs> with a jungle theme is purely <laughs> coincidental right these are just random alligators Right. They just, just being stored in a trailer. Yep. And gold bars and, you know, whatever that, that thing good. is on the bottom. <laughs> I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. That was very impressive. I'm not sure I can do that. This is actually, <laughs> it's, it's it's actually hard. I, I very deliberately practice yeah. this. I'm glad you did. And, and, and I, come, I come with a complete sense of terror. <laughs> it's anyway. actually way, way easier than Pitfall. Um, okay. That is true, actually. <laughs> you, you you can't run off his head. You actually stop at his eyeballs. If you know, doesn't let you slide off and that sort of thing. But still, it's a tight jump. You know. <laughs> it it is. Yeah, and you have to you have to be on the the edge of the snout to make it over at least the middle ish. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um, somebody was asking about the ROM that's uh, the binary that's included uh, on the tire tier purchases. Um, I already know the answer, but does it run on the Harmony or Harmony Encore cart? I haven't tried it on Harmony. Have you? No. I that have. Don't know. It, it doesn't support yeah. that bank switching technique yet. I can see it very easily being upgraded to support it because there's no reason it can't. Yeah. It just doesn't know what to do with it right now. Well, yeah, any yeah. of your uh, emulating devices that download into memory have to have enough memory. I mean... They didn't yeah. really plan on having my circuit board supports 256k. So if That's you're great. out there and you're <laughs> and you're making your thing uh, compatible, be sure to go all the way up to 256k in case the next guy decides to go that big. But, <laughs> That's um, right. Yeah. So you know, for example, you can't like plug it into some of these things and get it to play from that. But like with the Retron, you can plug it in the back. You can put it on the micro SD. Yeah. 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 Like. The Retron 77 supports it. Stella, uh, on any platform that you can run it on, supports it. So oh, there's many, coming. many ways to play the the ROM that's included on the higher tiers. I, I, right. I do want. want to also give a shout out to Javatari, yeah, and oh, yes. an 8-bit workshop which is based on Javatari. I actually use it a lot in making this game. So um, you know, the emulator. Yeah, I use it all the time for my them. show. Yeah, it's it's really really handy for sending somebody a link to just play the game, just yeah. go and play the game, and uh, yeah, I use it all the time just to throw on a game. You don't have to load anything oh. up. It's just the giraffe. right there, drag and drop. Gary the giraffe. The giraffe, the giraffe is giraffe. impressive as hell. Very proud of the giraffe. <laughs> that was one of those. Can we make a giraffe that looks like a giraffe? <laughs> And the number of, like, you, you're definitely using the ball as part of the giraffe because there's no flicker here. There, there's, uh, there's your guy. He's running across the screen. So you've got one player character, and then you've got the giraffe, the other player character. But there's a second color count. all the way down the giraffe. Yep, count the colors. Yeah, how can that be? <laughs> there's, a, 
Remember, so we, there's a lot of triple colors all over this game. And look, she won a gun. Yay! Yay. Now that was not yeah. animal abuse. Standing on that giraffe head. The giraffe thing likes all. that. When Gary and I joined Activision, Dave and Bob and, and Al really drilled it into our heads. We don't flicker here. And so we, we just don't yes. flicker. Yeah, but yeah, that, don't talk about that too much because when you do shoot with a gun, you do flicker the bullet. But yes, um, there is a flicker cool. in this game somewhere. And, and there's text as well when the text goes up on the screen. Yeah, well, yeah. for these the text, suckers, they're hard oh, to. The text, text I show. What, the text uses what I created back in the 80s, which I called the filled Venetian blind technique. Right. And the watching it on this live stream, it, it jitters. But watching it on a television with the Atari 2600, it does not. Because yeah. what it really does is it draws every odd and even line and then comes back on the next frame and fills the even and the odd lines. And that works perfectly on original hardware with even, even a good monitor. But certainly with an old yeah. television. Um, yeah, Twitch is not set up for this kind of special mm -hmm. stuff. Flickering 60 frames a second, it just doesn't know what to do. Yeah, nobody's <laughs> set up for 30 frames per second of anything. So most of the things are 60 <laughs> yes. frames, but when, when we do the filled Venetian blind, it does go to 30, and they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and speaking of... Uh, techniques of representing graphics are, are there any new techniques in this that you didn't know about or use in the 70s and 80s that may have come about you know since then or ones you've developed yourself specifically for this game i remember at least one day where you said that you had come up with something that you hadn't done before i don't remember what it was yeah um you know, without getting too much into spoilers, there are times where right. uh, there's a, a faked priority so that Andre can run in between something mm -hmm. that just, um, uh, you know, in the good old days, or let's say af after the 2600, when they had the NES, you could do priority, you could set sprite priorities and that sort of thing. But 2600 doesn't work that way. No. Layer zero, <laughs> right. always sprite like zero is always priority over sprite one yeah. and so there's often a lot of tricks that we have to do for that um jump go down and die on those snakes <laughs> on the uh the, the last ones? these ones no the red ones yeah 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 one screen over there we go and, yeah. and tell us that you didn't know they were snakes <laughs> oh, they're snakes. I think we, we recognize those right away. You duck under. That wasn't I know, your I've idea. Been struggling to. No, 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 no. Yeah, you duck. have to get down oh, there. You, you have to get fly. Yeah. Big jump. Oh. <laughs> you can <laughs> it Wrong snake to die on. I know. <laughs> there we go. Oh, uh, well, anyway, when you get. When you get we'll get it, back there. <laughs> next time you see one of those snakes die. Okay. Because there's a riddle that it tells you. That oh. gives you some information for the future. I've been avoiding those snakes altogether. I, I, <laughs> so uh, I mean, I mean the big snake, which is inside um, the snake, the rock. snake trailer. What do we call the snake trailer, Gary? Um, Maybe yeah, I don't remember. I don't know. Reptile you know, something. I think, yeah, the uh, reptile rep trailer. Reptile house. <laughs> um, you know, anyway. Good luck jumping those. No, you're supposed to die on them, right? Yep. Oh, die on them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let them die. And let the... Uh, Red and yellow. And let the fellow. <laughs> What's the scroll snake. at the top? Coral nice. snake. Okay. And then game over. <laughs> um, so, with the cartridges... And the digital downloads, they're t let, let's talk a little bit about that and how they're tied to the person who buys them, right? When you buy the, buy the game. And how somebody could sell their cartridge to another person. And then, you know, the high scores are with that cartridge. Now, let's maybe if you could run through how that all works. Go ahead, Because people are going to have questions. Yep. Sure. Um, I mean, basically, the game is, 
customized and manufactured to order. Um, you go on our website, first come, first serve, you get assigned a serial number. And if you complete the purchase through PayPal, sorry, we're only using PayPal I and mean, we're not Amazon for God's sake. Um, but you complete the purchase and it gets manufactured with that serial number in it. Uh, at the same right. time, it gets manufactured with some cryptological information written into the ROM so that um, the online portal that handles registration and score submission and such recognizes your game as yours. Mm. So once it's registered, nobody can post a high score except you with your user ID and password. Um, you know, you can tell if a game has been copied. If anything, you try to change the serial number, it knows. You know, those kinds of things. Just, <laughs> you know, people can download this thing. As soon as they have a ROM, they can read it and write a new ROM. Start messing about and wrecking the ROM. <laughs> about. Um, yeah. And so anyway, it's, it's all done with that in mind, is to provide um, the sanctity of the collector edition game. I mean, you've got that serial number and it's yours. However, um, collectors like to do aftermarket sales. So yep. one of the features on the website is a manage tab where you get to see all of the serial numbers that you own. And you can, that's where you actually download your uh, digital copy. And that is generated on the server automatically and downloaded to you so that it's your serial number, but it's identified as a digital copy and not a ROM copy. Mm -hmm. And um, you can click to, to if you're going to sell the game, you, you click on the, um, the sell link, and it sends yeah. you, emails you a code. And you can oh. send that code to the purchaser, and he uses oh. that to re-register the game in his name. And so for all oh. time, the game belongs to him, and now he can post scores. Oh, that's great. I mean, I've been asked in this process, since we're doing a digital download, they said, yeah, but aren't people just all going to just give it away and, you know, put it on the Internet so there's thousands of them? Yeah. And we ask that you don't do that. I mean, we think that people are, you know, this is a community, and I think um, people will try to be nice about it. But in any case, I tell you that if you do that, and that person... Um, tries to register a score, you're going to have to give him your password for him to do it, or he can't do it. Yeah. Um, so you don't want to do that, because then he could turn around and transfer it to somebody else. So uh, Nobody's going to want to buy that, that version of that game, because they, can, they can't use it properly. And, exactly. and if a pirated version were to win the patch before you, you <laughs> bought the game... Yes. You're not going to yeah. get a patch. The patch. Yeah, it's one time high only. High score. <laughs> that's all tied to that serial number. So. Right. So you lose benefits. And, and we benefits. actually <laughs> know when a score is submitted, if it's from a nefarious source. And right. people will be risking their relationship with Audacity, their ability to have an account. Their ability to yes. post scores, their ability to transfer items. They're going to risk all that if they let their binary out. Yeah, because there's going to be a bunch of people trying out that right. that right. QR code from all over the world. And it's like, well, Joey wasn't playing very fair with this purchase that he made. And he may not be able to get another game from the newest and greatest game from Audacity Games anymore. Yeah, and all we're asking for is respect. That's all. I mean, we're yeah. not I mean, you guys put in so game. much work. I, I, you know, the amount of units we'd have to sell to make anything <laughs> would be significant. And that's okay. We didn't do it yeah. for that. We did it because yeah. we love the platform. We love the enthusiasm of the people we meet at all the shows. We'd like to get our we investment back. love the fact back. that it's been 35 years and people <laughs> still play the game. What was that, David? We'd like to get our investment back. But... Well, we would like to get our yeah. investment back. But we're that certainly would be nice, not right? going to be buying any <laughs> fancy cars with the money from this game. Another interesting thing about that is your your digital copy submits scores that are recognizable as emulator um, versions. 
So on the high scoreboard, okay. you can you can look at one guy who got a perfect game on a cartridge and another guy who got a perfect game on an emulator. And you guys, yeah. you the community gets to decide whether or not the emulator um, score is as good as the ROM cartridge no. score. Because because the emulator Stella has a rewind, it has a save feature. Mm -hmm. You can start off and go back. So the emulator scores are going to be like uh, take it with a grain of salt, maybe. <laughs> you can actually sort the um, the high score board by emulator or cartridge. Oh, great! That's good. Yeah. So we'll see that start filling up. Oh, that move quickly that after. she just did that was that was pretty what damn good. <laughs> Some special move. <laughs> oh, know. good. That's that good. Was, the, did you see that thing? She did the slide to get by the snake. Very nice. That uh, is very uh, impressive. Is, is, this, very... is this the first time in the duck shoot? Not for her. Well, in this, in the, yes, in this that we've shown yes. it. Yes. Okay. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have that a I question guess. from the chat from <laughs> Hit and Run Artist. Does Audacity Games limit the color palette in the way Activision did? It looks very distinctive. Yes. Yes, we only mean, make our screens look good. That's the rule. <laughs> well, no look, brownie greens. That's well said. <laughs> look at the duck shoot right there. Is I've made a big point about how if you outline color areas with black lines, everything looks crisper and more beautiful. Yep. And oh yeah. So that was oh done God, there for it. that very reason. Get it. And uh, yes, I mean, if I want to use a blue, I'm going to use the, the most beautiful blues that the 2600 can put out. Same with green, yep. reds, and such. And there's great colors on the 2600. There's using a wide variety of them. Using the off purple is equivalent to using one of the sour notes if you're doing music. You just don't do it. That's <laughs> all. Now, yeah. To the to the kernel writers, kernel writers out there, if you look at this kernel, it is astounding that you can shoot each one of these things individually and they have rotating at graphics and color tables yeah oh yeah yeah that is insane <laughs> it's a lot going on six five four oh are you gonna get it no oh, oh my god Hurry! <laughs> oh four out of five that's oh, that was pretty good stuff, though. Oh. <laughs> um one duck short <laughs> now, there's been some some hardware that's been made for the 2600 um, after, you know, 1992. Most the mo the most popular one is the uh, Atari Vox, right. um, where it saves score. I mean, you've got you guys have your own score thing, so you probably wouldn't use that. But there's voices from the Atari Vox. There's also the newly released Quad Tari that can take four joystick mm -hmm. inputs as well. Um, would you possibly consider those in the future uh, implementing using those or are you going to stick to, you know, the stuff that's more common that everybody has? Well, I tell you, I am um, I can't very well say anything bad about adding hardware to the Atari 2600 since I was the first guy to do it. <laughs> yeah, you opened the floodgates. <laughs> but I did it in 1980 two, three, whenever that was, because we loved the Atari 2600 and wanted to try to squeeze a couple more years out of it. You know, if Nolan Bushnell had been at Atari, there would have been an, a new hardware system coming out every two years. But, oh, yeah. um, you know, he wasn't there, and so they let the Atari 2600 be their, their flagship product for a decade or more. Um, but we loved it, and we wanted to keep it alive, and that's why I made the DPC chip. That's why I made it possible to do more stuff on the Atari 2600. With technology the way it is right now, there's nothing special about that, nothing neat. I mean, I don't mind them. I mean, it's a different philosophy. Like I said, it'd, it'd be kind of pointless for me to complain about somebody putting new hardware into Atari 2600 since <laughs> I was loaded in the first place. But yeah. I want you to compare this game to every game you've ever played on the Atari 2600. And you can't do that if we use extra hardware and expansions, this and, and whatever. Right. And um, Gary and I put an awful lot of effort into this game. I mean, this game is, it's a large ROM, absolutely, but it is also um, 15 times deeper than probably any Atari 2600 game ever made. And, um, yeah. You know, in my mind, it's the best Atari 2600 game ever made, and if, if it makes your top three or top five as a player, I'll be happy. 
Yeah, and I think people, like people um, posting on Facebook and elsewhere were like, oh, is it going to be Pitfall 3? Is it going to be Keystone Capers 2? I think that anybody who plays this game is going to be more than satisfied with, with it being like a, a spiritual successor to both of those games because it has things from those games and you know it's a it's a platformer that uh has the same feel i mean obviously because it's made by the same people it's gonna have the same look it's gonna have the same movements so i think people are going to be very very satisfied with that it, those people that are asking for those 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 sequels now uh, are you on the you're on the clown car screen yeah. i just want to talk about that clown graphic a little first yeah. of all Dave and I love the comment the other day that someone put on the trailer YouTube site that said, I'm down for killing clowns. <laughs> fairly clever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> though there isn't a lot of killing clowns, there, there, there may be some. But what, what I really wanted to say <laughs> is I drew that clown, and it took a long yeah. time to the point where I had to have Dan dress up like a clown <laughs> with that Red nose. I just got the makeup off yesterday. <laughs> we didn't get it that good. But I thought, hell. That's, I'm proud of that clown. I think that's a good looking clown. It scared it's, the hell out of the a, people in the building. But right. It's a very wide graphic and very colorful as well. Yeah, does that give you it's, enough colors for a 2600 sprite? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Um, Would you like me to show this um, trailer or leave it for the people who are going to play it? So. Or me asking me? Well, no. I, in general, <laughs> I can keep going. I don't want to give all the the exciting bits away, um, considering the game hasn't been I released mean, yet. I so. mean, technically, they showed, it showed almost it trailer, every though. screen in the trailer. You showed it in the trailer, yeah. Yeah, you, they did show clobbering a clown in the trailer, so I I, I think okay. this one. I, I get the feeling you're after. asking because you find this very hard to play. It's very hard, <laughs> and I'm not going to do very well. <laughs> It is very hard to get five stars in this one. Very hard. Uh, this yes, one is, is hard. Yes, it yeah. is hard. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. It. The, the, it's fast. It, you have to have super fast reactions. Yeah. Like just to explain, you have to clobber them when they're angry clowns. Yeah. You don't don't hurt the nice smiley ones, no. but you have to, you know, make them happy. Um, and Dave so, took my graphic and modified it to make the scary clown. I thought you did a very good job on it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's angry. He's, a, he's really not a happy man. <laughs> so with Audacity, you're starting making games for the 2600, obviously. There's this one and Dan's uh, Casey's Gold coming up next. Um, do you have other platforms in mind or favorite ones that you may think about doing next? I know you said there needs to be the market. But um, just any, any inkling of which ones that you might, like a C64, well, to NES? Well, to start with, you know, there's still a lot to be done on the 2600. We, we are oh, in yeah. conversation with some of the other old masters, and I think, honestly, some of them are kind of waiting around to see how this does. So if you want your other favorite Atari 2600 game developers, professionals from the Ooh. old days... To be involved, you um, you vote by making this successful. Um, yeah. So, I think we still have a long way to go before we're really done with the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Uh, for Gary yeah. and I, the SNES was actually one of our favorite systems to work on. Love it. Um, and NES yep. is considered uh, retro at this point. NES and SNES. Yep. That's going to require some schmoozing with Nintendo. We've had good relations right. with Nintendo over the years and we won't we won't do anything that they won't agree with. So um, that'll be a long process of getting getting approved to do that. Um, yeah. so yeah, I mean we'll we'll take them one one day at a time. I mean Activision did the exact same thing. We we were founded on a number of principles about what software development should be and how it should be credited as authors and and such but from a marketing standpoint we were all 2600 for a while even though other game right. systems were out there we had a real simple philosophy back then is as soon as the, a game system hit an installed base of a million units there was enough market for a third-party software company to develop on 
So uh, the Intellivision was the first, and you know, as they came out, we we jumped on them. So, you know, we got a lot to do on the 2600. We love a lot of these other machines. We've developed on every single one of them as they, you know, yeah. came into being over the last four decades. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't really have an answer for you at this point, but um, yeah. We, you'll take it as it comes, I guess. You, you, see you, what make opportunities. A, you make us successful, we will keep doing it. <laughs> you hear that out there? Buy Audacity's games and you'll get more. Um, so the D-Train asks, one of the strengths of the Atari homebrew community is, is that it's very collaborative. Um, I realized that when you guys were programming for the 2600, it was mostly a solo experience, but do you see an opportunity to, to collaborate with the community going forward on game development, game testing, tool development, or anything like that. Like you were mentioning, um, your tools. Are they going to be uh, in-house tools for people that are developing with Audacity, or are you going to uh, make them more widely available? It probably depends on how the, how the next six months play out for us. Right. I mean, we've, we're still learning. This is a... This is an comes up on the screen, Dan. and an exploration for us. <laughs> well, you're giving it all if, away. If, if it becomes yeah, a real you may business, want to go back. then, you know, um, we'll have more flexibility. Yeah. Oh, Dan said, because <laughs> it pops up on the screen, uh, you may not want to go too much further. Okay, into fair the game. enough. Got a, lot yeah. of, a lot of cool <laughs> hidden stuff that we want to... And, and I think, yeah, you want to... It's that. very fair. Yeah. Very fair. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I... It, it, that's the fun of playing a new game. Uh, you you want to explore it yourself. You want to figure out because you know even reading the manual. Like I, I took a quick look through the the manual. It it explains the basics of how to play, but not how to use the things that are in the game. How to like the combos of use this here, wait for this, and uh, even there's something like right, right in the beginning of the game. That throws you off mm -hmm. if you, you know, don't do things the way, you know, Correct. you have to read carefully, let's say. Well, and, and um, we learned that over three solid months of game testing. I mean, yeah. this game, as you know, this game went through months yes. of game testing. A lot of feedback from people, especially in the very early versions, saying, right. hey, you know, there's some things I hell? can't figure out or it's too hard or... <laughs> It's too yeah. damn tough to get over the flames of the flaming skull or whatever, and yeah. there, you know, we went. The bunnies the were killer before. Speaking of that, the bunnies <laughs> did kill you, right? Yes. I think the bunnies before? killed yeah. you, and I believe John Hardy from yeah. the video game he's <laughs> yeah was helping us out also, and he did not like the bunnies killing you. <laughs> Well, here, I've got something else to kind of show off, is um, yeah. go to the inventory. Oh, there you go, right there. So we look up in the upper left-hand corner. We see the fuel tank, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. When, when you're on that screen, that's one of my things I'm proud of. In, in video game development for the last three decades, if you wanted to pop up an icon, you would always use a gray um, mask behind it, so as to um, oh yeah make it stand out. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you do that on the twenty six hundred. You use the uh, transparency bit, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> like there's, there's an alpha channel. Well, yeah. well. To, to that point, the 2600 does have see-through, you know, pixels. If you don't put one there, you can see through it. Um, that's a second sprite? Not that cleanly. Is that a second sprite of just graduated colors in behind another sprite? I'm guessing. I mean, I could go look in Stella, but <laughs> um, that's what I'm guessing. But that's very impressive. Like, you don't see that shading. And that actually completely eluded me to this point it just seems natural yeah like it seems like it should be there but if you know anything about the 2600 it's super limited like you have to work 
for all these really special effects that you're, you're able to squeeze out of this. But you are correct. That is the other player, double wide. Yeah. Yeah. Shape. But every line of that player is the slightly darker color to match the sunset. Right. So right. It simulates a transparent gray square. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's it's amazing. <laughs> it's and it's those little touches that, that make the game, right? It's something that somebody may not notice, especially with a modern gaming sensibility. Right. But it's there and I I think maybe you know some of these things like the pop-up menu on the bottom those, those you know those kind of things maybe didn't exist in the initial run of 2600 but having the experience of modern gaming sensibilities it's like oh yeah we'll put a menu we've got a full screen menu we've got shading and all these things that really enhance the newer games well and in fact your inventory pop-up is not just a pop-up i mean i slap myself sometimes because i do get really insane about it it's a scroll up right oh my goodness go go, go to the star it is shaded to look like a um physical um you know metal plaque or whatever right <laughs> yeah slightly shaded on the top and the bottom of each gray bar yeah Dave so it's got a beveled on. edge Dave beveled edge pop yeah. on but he made it scroll up oh. that's right uh, he just extra used work. scroll register. Don't believe a word he's saying. <laughs> like there's a scroll register on the Atari 2600. That's location 7A, I think. Um, uh, ZZip asks, there's so many ways to play classic games today. Flashback consoles, emulators, new retro consoles like Amico and Atari VCS. So besides having boxed games, are there any plans to make these games available in a form that can be played on more modern retro systems like like i i think we when we talk last I, it came to mind that you could almost wrap this in a wrapper like an emulation wrapper so that they actually are still playing the 2600 game but on like through steam right. or something in steam or an iphone or yeah I, I, like yes yeah. potentially i had somebody reach out within the first few days and say you really should wrap it and put it on steam Yep. And, yeah, and I mean, maybe we would do that at some point when we have a collection. Yeah, we don't want to undersell. Right. You know, the Steam <laughs> audience is incredibly demanding, and incredibly sophisticated, and competitive as all hell. And I don't think a standalone twenty six hundred game would would carry the weight there. I don't know. We'll see. But maybe a collection right. would. I don't know. Yeah, as long as it does come out, you know, physical, you can then do something. Uh, electronic and again you do have the downloadable in the collector edition so that you can yeah. put it on any emulator you want but yeah. you know, I've had a long career in video games and one of my biggest disappointments is that I've done a number of things that don't exist anymore um, Gary and I created yeah. the lifesavers candy stand and put hundreds of games on it and yeah. at one time we were our games were being played 80 million times a month on that site and then ten, oh. 10 years later, it didn't exist. Yeah. You know, so. And I'm a, I'm a big proponent of that as well. If I can get it on a disc, on a physical form, download it, like have some way that if servers go offline one day, and they do, they, they inevitably do, companies go out of business, or there's no more interest, uh, interest declines in that game, it's good and it's nice to, you know, play these games still after the company goes away because you know we have games from the old 2600 days that we can still pop into our uh, VCS consoles and play them now but nowadays you can't you can't do that you can't take these ephemeral games and keep them to yourself you know your 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 PS4 crashes all your games go with it <laughs> like it's it's gone you, know, you can't download them again and that's part of the reason we're active with the National Video Game Museum is mm. to help them and participate in um, documenting the legacy, the history of the industry. Because, you know, 10, 15 years ago, that wasn't happening. And it, it really is critically yeah. important. So, um, oh, and we should say this is the first game 
that is um, going to go out with the seal of approval of the National Video Game Museum. Oh, very nice. Yeah, we're yes. very proud of that. So we're That's proud awesome. of that. Um, we love working with those guys. They've done an incredible job. Uh, I don't know if you've been to Frisco to see the museum, but yep. it is good. Well oh, worth, no, we haven't. Well worth it. Yeah. Incredible. Next time we go. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, I'd love to go there. I didn't even know it existed. So. Yeah, as, as much as museum there. Mm -hmm. you can imagine it, you can't imagine it. It's, <laughs> it's bigger than that. Stunning. Yeah. Yeah, it's stunning. Oh, know. that's awesome. Yep. Now, there was two work, two games in the works from, from Dan, uh, Casey's Gold and Bon Voyage, and it's it's been announced or put up uh, that Casey's Gold will be released in the summer. Yep. Um, so are, are there any updates on Bon Voyage as well? Is that still happening and uh, happening under the ban of audacity now all the games i will be doing will be under the audacity label and i know that some yeah. people have asked and i haven't taken the time yet to update them my initial thought a couple of years ago on on what was then gold rush was to do a kickstarter to actually right fund the manufacturing component well dave and gary have done that so there will not yeah. be a kickstarter for any of the games that i was doing but they're all going to be done in cooperation with Gary and Dave, and they're all going to come out under the Audacity label. Uh, yep. Casey's Gold will be next, um, and that's very far along, and right now tweaking the levels that are in it, and, and then we'll get into the testing phase, which I'm, I'm hoping you and Tanya will help out on. Oh, and, uh, for sure. Bon Voyage, <laughs> I'd like to do after that. I don't think every one of, at least I know from my part, I'm taking well advantage of Dave's 128K, and I don't know if every game I do will be as large, because I that one has taken three years. It was started, and like Gary and Dave, I have a full-time job where I produce yeah. video games for various companies. Um, but I certainly will not be taking two years for the next title. And, and it may not even encompass the 128K, uh, but it will certainly be an Activision quality title that that'll stand next to the work that we're now doing. Um, so yes, I'm I'm hopeful to to have Bon Voyage after Casey's Gold, and I'm sure he yeah. has something in the works, and Gary as well has something in the works. Oh, that's excellent because people were asking about release schedules and right. upcoming games, and of course. <laughs> and Dave and I are as high on Casey's Gold as we are on this title. What Dan has yeah. so far is just incredible. So, yeah, it looks uh, great. It's interesting because it's a different feel. Completely. It, it's it's got a different feel. So yeah. um but but equally I mean it's like an artist's style. It's it's equally impressive mm. but in a different yeah. way. And, yeah, because uh, people were uh, making wait. obvious comparisons. They were they were like, Oh, yes. okay, it's moving vehicles, you're running on top of them. Yep. But That's you know where it ends. It's completely um, different. Um, Type of game. Absolutely amazing that that so much he was doing, we were doing without communicating. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. yeah we just looked at each other and said, you know, great minds think alike because yeah, I went exactly. off on my own and did things that they went off and did. It was just the synergy was amazing. It was there even though we weren't working together. I think the name for that is parallel invention. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it was very funny when you announced Audacity uh, in the first announcement. People were like, oh, now we're going to have to wait for a year. Or there's going to be a Kickstarter. I know, I like, enjoyed that. You wait. You just wait. That was it's my days favorite away. part of the whole thing. <laughs> was, we knew that people would immediately say, oh, here we go. <laughs> where it's gonna be two years yeah blah, blah, blah. they're gonna ask for two million dollars and then nothing for two years yeah someone i follow on twitter said well this is something i didn't expect <laughs> when we announced <laughs> the game would go on sale on on saturday people just couldn't and, believe it oh and, and but, you know oh, we yeah. wanted to do it that way we wanted to do it right we right. don't want to be yep. out there making a whole lot of hy hype we waited until it was, you know, you were there. We yeah. waited until it was oh, yeah. done, buttoned yeah. up, ready to go. Because we That's knew. That's the way to do it. Yeah, you got to have respect. You know, and yeah. Dave would, Dan would have already been done with his a long time ago if we didn't, you know, bring him in the help with this. So. Exactly, yeah. And now, as soon as it goes out, 
at least some of our focus will move on to helping Dan get that one done. Yep. yep. So, uh, the there was a question. Go for it. Go ahead. No. Uh, uh, Jason Lindsay asked from the forums, I have a question about Casey's Gold. Originally, when it was going to be a Kickstarter, it said there would be a contest when it came out to see who could find all the gold bars first. Will this contest still happen when it comes out this summer? Uh, I, no, think, I don't remember this contest. I think but... we're going to build those kind of programs into the games. Uh, I mean, right. people like those those type of things and through the highs. The patches. And and the... Right, patches. Yeah. And I talked about trading cards, cards, which I right. still like to do and uh, I've got the Gazette that I've made other copies of that will be coming out. So I, yeah, I, I think we're going to give these games kind of the full marketing support that we did at Activision, separate from running TV ads. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, there's Go no need to run to TV ads chameleon anymore. Trailer. You got the internet. Go back to the chameleon trailer while we're talking. Yes. Good All point. right. Um, somebody made a funny comment. No paddle mini game inside this game. Yeah. Right. <laughs> No, we do not uh, read the paddle. <laughs> no, just joystick. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, there's a great I, effect. Is that what you're going to talk well, about? Well, yeah, I mean, this? Gary and I have collaborated many, many times. And I told him I wanted a chameleon. And he, he vomited. I mean, I'm trying to make. <laughs> I hope I kept the original graphic I did. Trying to make a chameleon <laughs> on the 2600, you know, it was like the clown and the the giraffe and all these things. These are just yeah. things that hadn't been seen before. And then when he sent me that, I said, yeah, but a chameleon has to fade out and, you know, <laughs> match. Yeah, it doesn't out. just change colors. It fades. It, it fades, fades out. It goes through a full fade animation of about eight frames, I think. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the constant blowing of the wind... Uh, it as the headbands blowing, the the, the, sash. the sash is blowing. It's gorgeous too. Uh, <laughs> and the 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 bush like the bushes are are from uh, another game that you've made, um, and of course the crocodiles and there's the birds, the yellow uh, airplane as well flying by, the airplane. There's so many amazing References. nods. Yeah, yeah. To the the games we all love and grew up with, and so it it feels. It has a definite feel of that it came from you guys, mm -hmm. like the collaboration of all you guys. Somebody uh, is asking on the chat if I also dressed up like a chameleon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Modeling as a chameleon. I did. It was really hard for him to, to sketch me when I disappeared. <laughs> you, have to into see, the wall. you have to see my first chameleon graphic. I said it to Dave, you might have to post it I somewhere. Said, yeah. Good Lord, this is horrible, but it's the best I can do. And then he inspired me to go back and do better, and I finally got one I liked. But I remember that was one of the tougher graphics. Holy cow. That was, uh, that was actually from Retro Game Net, who asked, who asked that. That was, that was very okay. good. Yeah. Um, so I have run out of questions. If there's any more questions from the chat, we will take those. Um, oh, yeah, a good question. Will this be available for the 7800? Well, it is. It because is. Because this runs in the 7800. Yes. Yeah, so if you, even if you only have a 7800, you can pop this cartridge in. It's a, it's, it's a tight fit, but it does work. And, and <laughs> so We didn't see the, the, the reason to make the 7800 version in the future because mm -hmm. the 2600 is even, this version is even better than the 7800 could do. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the, the things that people are doing on the 2600 are just astounding now. So, yep. you know, you get you get your money's worth with a 2600 version for sure. You don't need anything past that. It's it's incredible. Someone just um, asked, will it run on a Retron? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. The ROM will run on a ret Retron. It, the Retron doesn't read much past a 4K cartridge. So many cartridges don't work on the Retron, but the ROM well, will. That brings right. up a, a thing. If you want to buy the game to run on the Retron, you'll have yep. to buy the collector edition because that you comes a with a code right. that you can put on the SD card. The cartridge itself, plugging it into a, re a Retron, does not run because, as no. you're saying, it doesn't That's read right. that many banks. No, it doesn't. Just like one. I don't think it does any bank switching. Uh, um, yeah, it's very hard. It does very, very few. Very few. Just a couple of service tips for 
people who are going on tomorrow at 2 o'clock to buy the game. Yes. It's just like concert tickets. <laughs> you can't buy the game unless you have an account on our website. Uh... Our website now allows you to set up an account. Just before we got on here, we put that up. So oh, great. You can go in, set up your Audacity Games account. You have to also have a PayPal account. You can't buy without a PayPal account. Get your Audacity yeah. Games account set up. Get your PayPal account set up. And be on a computer. You can do it on a mobile device, but we have found mm -hmm. that certain browsers are a real pain in the you-know-what when it comes to this sort of thing. Yeah, on certain and maybe a little quirky. Right. Yeah. Right. So rather than dealing with a cantankerous browser, just <laughs> be on a computer and be there, and the countdown at 2 o'clock will light that button up and then yeah. go for it. 2 o'clock. Dave will be hiding under the bed because he doesn't know <laughs> if we have enough bandwidth. <laughs> but... I'll give you Dave's home number if you can't get through. <laughs> so for tech support, ring. yeah. Uh, that'll be so yeah, at two, 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 2 p.m. Pacific, Pacific right? Five five right. p.m. Eastern. Eastern. That's all good. Calculated. That's all good information. I want to add one other thing. When you are creating yep. an account, you do have to enter an address. Um, obviously, we have to ship you the game. So it yep. doesn't seem like people will not enter an address, but you can't actually even buy the game without an address because there's an API on the website that calculates shipping. And it gives uh -oh. you all your shipping options from the slowest USPS to overnight. Oh, it's kind of silly because I'm not building them for a couple of days. So I wouldn't, don't buy overnight. <laughs> I can't, but yeah. you can't calculate your shipping without an address mm -hmm. and you can't finish the PayPal transaction without an address. So yeah. be sure to fill out the whole thing. You, um, yeah. you create your own password. Um, don't use some other password that you use for your bank or anything because we don't want to be mm -hmm. that company that, you know, somebody hacks and causes a problem, but, um, you'll get, you'll, you get to create a screen name, which will show up in the high score lists. Right, that's a good point. Think about that ahead of time. So yeah, yeah, prepare to have a screen name, although most people already have their handles, you know, they know what they like to use. Um, and it does have a field for the phone number, not necessary, but it actually turns out it is necessary for international shipping. It's necessary for some carriers. So if you want to have the most possible options of shipping available to you, put in a phone number as well. Yeah, and it's good when they come to your door and you're not home, and they phone you and go, oh, "Okay, don't don't leave it at my door because okay. there's porch pirates coming. Don't take my Audacity game." <laughs> <laughs> um, and somebody asked if you could uh, sum up the uh, different options that are available again, um, because now we're talking about the game going on sale tomorrow at two p.m. The different levels of games, just you know, quickly. Well, just to be to start with. Go to audacitygames.com. It's now changed. Um, we, right. yep. we put something new up every day, and we put up a list of everything that the three options ah. of the editions have. Um, you, can, you can look at that in mobile, but I recommend desktop. You get a lot more information, and that will answer a lot of the questions. But I'm going to let Gary repeat them for you here. $60 standard version. All the games have a serial number. They all have high score posting. And the they all have a four color package, top quality, uh, four color label and printed manual. And they have the ability to earn two different patches. Standard game comes with the box, manual, color label in high quality box. Next version up. Collector Edition, in addition to what I just said, also comes with the all-important second copy of the game as a download version. Just on and off. And it comes with the Certificate of Authenticity, which is signed by Dave and I as the designers. It also comes with a poster. And that is the Collector Edition, and that's $99. 
The mm. big kahuna, for people who have more money than cents, is $140. <laughs> and in addition to everything the other two had, it adds on, we autograph the front of the box. Mm. We give you a collectible truck with Audacity Games on it, which you've seen before. Actually, Circus Convoy on it. The Circus Convoy on it. Yeah, uh, You get the belt buckle, which is really, really nice. Though in the images <laughs> on the website, it looks like it's the size of a basketball. It's actually normal size. Yeah. Isn't there a commercial <laughs> with a guy walking with a belt buckle on TV and the belt buckle is like six feet in diameter? <laughs> that's not. That's a beautiful, beautiful belt buckle. Inspired by the fact that Stampede had a belt buckle right. in the Activision mm. days. Right. And the third, what's the third, Dave? It's One more. Custom, There's the hat. Custom trucker the hat. hat. The trucker's cap. Oh, yeah. Which I can has, see it now. It's on the website. Yeah. Yes, which is, which is beautiful as well. And serial numbers are important. On the VIP collector, for $140, you're going to get a serial number under 100, mm. which is very impressive. On yep. the collector edition, you're going to get a serial number 100 to 2,000. Standard edition is over 2,000. So for right. people that are collector in mind of you know having the best serial number, <laughs> you've got these different tiers. Yeah. I want to take a minute and I want to say hi to my grandkids who are watching this. You can oh. add three heartbeats <laughs> onto this. Lexi, Logie, and Blake are all watching this right now. So we're going to all say hey hi guys. to them. They think that I'm on a Zoom right now and that they can talk to me. So, oh, hi, yeah. guys. But I can't. There you go. That. Very funny. <laughs> so those yeah. are the three tiers. I think we they're all it. very reasonably priced considering. Yep. I mean, my wife saw the final graphic this morning of the big tier, the 140. And she said, you're not charging enough. Look at all that stuff. <laughs> it's a good deal. Like $60 it is, deal, is very, very standard for uh, a retro gaming in a box right now. It's, it's, it's what you expect to pay for sure. Yeah, we're yeah. trying to be as fair and reasonable as we possibly can. There's a lot that yeah. went into it. And we certainly want to make it as affordable as we can for everyone. One of the comments on the website pointed out that $140 it's like thirty nine ninety five adjusted for inflation. There you go. It's it's the price of an old game back in the eighties. You're not paying any more, but you're getting so much more. Right. Yeah. <laughs> adjusted for inflation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, if there's anything else you guys want to add, I think we covered a lot. Did yeah. quite a bit. Yep. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for coming on and showing off your amazing new game. Circus Convoy. It is unbelievable. Like I have played it for literally months now, and it it is. And I there's so much more that I haven't even seen. So I'm really looking forward to playing it even more. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've you've created an incredible game and uh, a love letter to everybody who enjoys the 2600. Still, you know, 46 years later after it first came out. <laughs> it's incredible that there's still this community that loves and supports these games now and that you've returned. The kings have returned uh, to bestow upon us this incredible game. So I want to thank you so much for well, making this game and for coming for on the show. We thank everyone for all the kind words on yeah. the uh, internet that they've been saying we're, we're gratified by the warm hospitality. Yeah, we're honored. And we do these games for, for the audience, for the players. And frankly, we just love writing them. So, yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. And most programmers so think we're nuts for saying that. A lot of people <laughs> won't go near the 2600. But for us, it's, it's home, you know? Yeah. 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 It just, I have the same exact feeling <laughs> as you guys. It's just, it's a, it's a beautiful system and capable of so much. Yep. And, and I'm, I'm really happy there's a new game from you guys. So thank you so much, uh, David, Gary, Dan, for coming on the show. And uh, we're looking forward to 2 o'clock tomorrow, where everybody can literally play the game at 2 o'clock because...
Those well, no, tiers wait. include. No, we talk about ship dates. Let's oh, talk about... Wait, hold on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. There is one. What you're what you're saying is not one hundred percent accurate. Asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, we should have talked about this when the game ships. If you order tomorrow and the next couple of days after tomorrow, the physical okay. games will ship on March twenty, the week of March twenty second, somewhere in that week. Okay. Your downloadable version will be available when your game ships. Assuming you oh okay. collector edition. The, the, if the you have bought a collector edition or a VIP edition, when you will get oh. notice when your game ships, and at that point there will be a link for your download. Okay, that's it was very a just important. logistic very change important. from what we had earlier discussed. I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. Yeah, because because as far as I knew, it was you bought it yes. the wrong available. Point, so that's very that. important. Yeah, that's right. very important for people to know. And, and one other so thing soon, we didn't talk soon. about that we'll mention briefly is that we expect that the game will be available at certain retro game stores. Oh, right. We haven't yes, made any yes. deals yet, but we've had discussions. Uh, you know, there are issues in the, the technology that we assign the serial number uh, uh, when you buy it off our site. So what hard goods do we give to the people at the store and how do you oh, get the right. serial number? But we're working all that out and we want to get it into the mom and pop neighborhood Retro game store, if they want to carry it, we expect that'll happen. Yeah. Right. And it will be and, for and sale by, at the National Video Game Museum as well. Sure. Oh, perfect. And by extension, I'm, I'm guessing you might also be at like retro gaming expos when those happen again. Oh, God, but, yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, we'll be. Yeah, that's we'll be excellent. Well. Yes, we, yeah, we that, wish we were at them yesterday. They're so much fun. Yeah. yeah, they are a lot of fun. Yeah. So, yeah. So really looking forward to those yeah. happening again. Yeah. And then yep. you guys can be there and sell them and sign them and shake hands and do all the things you do. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's excellent. So thank you once again mm -hmm. for being on the show. And uh, I'm sure everybody's looking forward to getting this new game into their hands. Thanks for having us. We thank appreciate it. Thank you so much it. for having us, James. You bet. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, desktop. <laughs> Anything there? No. no. Nothing good. Okay. <laughs> Nothing that uh, people could incriminate us with. Oh, I could take these out of our ears. Oh, that was amazing. Incredible. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, tuning in today and um, watching the show. And watching this, let me switch everything back to what I normally have it so I can see the chat and everything finally. Yes. Because I've been just getting highlights. Drexel... <laughs> Drexel has been um, yeah in the chat and helping us post uh, questions from the chat. Mm -hmm. So I hope I got enough, got to enough of the questions because some of them, you know, I'd ask them or in a different form. Yes. Um, so I was, we were actually going to play Circus Convoy tomorrow. <laughs> thinking it, the ROM was released. Thinking the ROM was released, and I was like, okay, we're gonna play through the whole game as much as we can. <laughs> We we can't do that. No, well, I, that would be very unfair. Yeah. Um, to do that. Um, so we're gonna wait till the early ship dates. The probably. early ship dates when everybody else gets their ROM yeah. because that would not. Yeah. Now we can yeah. show off the cartridge. Yeah. And, and and so we'll do some close-ups of the yeah the I don't know what you call it merch, merch the extra the items and the cartridge. Um, the camera right now doesn't really have autofocus yeah, so. so we're gonna plug in an extra the other camera the cat cam the cat cam and use yep. it for a different purpose today yeah the cat cam swag thank yeah, you d train swag, swag. Come on, there's some in. good swag i especially love this truck i really want to can i take it out of the box uh if you're careful <laughs> sure swag tari <laughs> So let's get the cat cam up and running. So I know I turned it off. Uh, webcam full. Oh, no, not running yet. I have to unplug this. That might help. Keep the box. I don't know if we need the phone, but the box is great for... Webcam. Oh, get out the scissors. <laughs> Give it to me now. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, we got the webcam. 
Let's oh, go full where on is the it? Cabinet. <laughs> oh, you've got it? it there. Yeah, so I can move it around. There. Now you can see the corner of the uh... of the room. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, where's the Should good we spot? put it somewhere else? How about. Or towards towards. No. How about we put where's it on the laptop? Page? Right here. Back there. Yeah, that works. So it's in a spot that is accessible, and we'll move this closer. That works. All right. There we go. James, <laughs> want to keep the foam? Yeah. Uh, I, I is have there the foam? foam? Yeah. <gasps> I how was it, it positioned inside the box? I know how it was positioned. <laughs> don't you worry. Plus, we have video footage Higher. of how it was positioned. So. Yeah. There we go. Up, up, up. Just close yeah, you've things. got a bunch of windows there. Let's get a little there closer. We go. So there's the truck. So obviously that represents the truck in the game. It's gorgeous. It's Look at that really rainbow. Really nice. Yep. You've got uh, the jumping guy jumping over the, the magnificent Andre. Is it Andre yep. the magnificent? Andre the magnificent Andre. hopping over the uh, giraffe there. And or it's Andre. the same on the other side. Depending on yeah, there's truck the looks other great. Side. Classic rainbow looks. Yeah, of yeah. the guy, the trailing rainbow. I always love the bunnies. So they I mean, always have the bunnies even, and the hats with the rainbow. Uh, even we trailers. use that rainbow at the bottom because it's just such a an iconic Atari mm -hmm. look to it, the strong, bold colors, because the Atari has such great color output. And I just have to say, you can you can feel that this is like metal. Oh, it's metal, not yeah. plastic. Um, well, I mean, the trailer is plastic, but the the, a, um, a, a the blink, cab is metal. A blinking beautiful. one $140 on the screen now. Going, yeah. going soon. <laughs> Selling out soon. Yeah. Gorgeous. On sale tomorrow. Gorgeous. I know, I feel like I'm... Drexel says, I like that some of the things that you try to jump don't kill you when you hit them. Yeah. And and actually, it makes sense for those bunnies to not kill you because when you first start a game, you don't want to immediately die the first time you try to jump. No. So uh, So here's the belt buckle. Yeah. It says Circus Convoy, Audacity Games. Yeah. And it's got the truck and it's got the giraffe um, trailer. Which giraffe trailer VIP. on it. So did that's the VIP belt nope, buckle. No, feed did not stop. <laughs> um it's really detailed it's a and it's it's a proper buckle like it has weight to it it's wow. it's like metal it's really really good like i'm actually surprised of the low price that they're offering for considering all the goodies um so here's a patch it's not oh, the back side do you want to see the back side we oh, can get yeah. you the back side in here too because i think there's different back sides different widths for different belts right yeah, so it's I I know there's sort of a traditional backing to it. Yeah. yeah, and here's I think it's not the high score patch. I don't think it's the thank you. It this is the one they said that I think the first one hundred people get I as a thank you. Think that's this what, is the one. Yeah, yeah. that's that's because <coughs> it is it showing up to. on their website um, as being part of well, maybe that's something else. It looks a little different. Anyway. Um, this might be the first hundred. The I'm first not hundred is what? Sure. Yeah. First yeah. 250, someone said. First 250, yeah, I couldn't remember. 250. So that's a nice uh, nice little bonus patch. Oh, we've got some oh. cat scratching. Do you want to let them in? Sure. All right. And just watch them because there's chewable cables for Atari. Oh. Just bring them here. right up. Come here. Come here. And this is the uh, mock certificate. I mean, the, the outside of it is going to be the real thing. The, the certificate's quite lovely. Yep. So very shiny. Watch that cat's mouth. I'm, I'm, I've got an eye on them. Um, inside, certificate of authenticity. There's going to be a seal on there that's not there right now. Yeah, holographic. So this is signed by Dave and Gary. So that's what you will get in some of the packages. Yeah, the collector and the VIP. Do you mind not chewing the cables? He's actually chewing the cables. <laughs> Oh, so you can't. Atari you cat. Um, just for complete sake, this is the uh, evaluation copy that you got. Yeah. That I that I was playing. I'm covering up something, but uh, <laughs> uh, the serial number. So this is the beta, the one I used for beta testing. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys want to see that, Circus Convoy. Kitties, causing trouble. Now we can show the cartridge up close as well. Oh, beautiful. So you guys can get a really good look at uh, the Activision style. Because I think some people were asking about that. Let's see if I can get the light shine properly on it. Yep. 
The Activision style handle at the top of it, where it's got the ridged edges, is very similar. He's he's chewing. Can you kick him out? He's bad. He's a bad cat. <laughs> he can't be trusted. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, kitties. Um, so here is the label. This looks like... Um, I don't think this is the final label because they were shipping me stuff early so I could show it on the show because it's a bit, uh, bit munched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is going to be like the graphic, the right graphic for it. Well, it's focused on you. Oh. There we go. So there's the front of it. There we go. It was seeing your face. There's the end of it. Circus Convoy. Let's try and get this focused. There we go. That's, That's better. better. Yeah, I have to cover my face. That's better. There, yeah. now people can take screenshots. Come on. Pull it back a little, maybe. There you go. Sometimes when you get too close. Yeah, it's not completely in focus. You'll have to pull it back a little. That's yeah. a bit better. There we go. There's a nice focus shot. There we go. There we go. Um, and you can see inside, hopefully, it's going to be very dark. Let me get a flashlight. This is going to be very tricky. Let's see. Oh, I forgot to ask about those pins <laughs> on the side. People the are asking about those pins. Yeah. Uh, well, you have to ask them retroactively and come back with the answer. That's right. It's good for somebody else's interview. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because those pins have like metal on them, but I don't think they lead anywhere. Do they? Oh, they do. Look how excited Pixel is. He's very excited He's about like, it. He's like, this is such a cool game. He's <laughs> such, you, you're such a good spokescat. Nice flashlight modeling. Yeah. Uh, it does say um, Audacity Games in there. Um, I mean, I, it can't, I can't show it properly, but it says Audacity Games in kind of a 8-bit font, 16-bit almost. It's a little bit high resolution for 8-bit font. Um, and he does, and he is able to reprogram these, um, on the fly and, and be able to redo the serial numbers and stuff and do the encryption. Um, uh, we didn't get too much into the encryption of it, um, because maybe... It's a little bit of a secret <laughs> of how the encryption is done, but he was talking about like it's serialized for each cartridge. So if this is your cartridge, it's going to have your number and it's going to have a bunch of bits throughout it um, so that the encryption is for you. And if you start changing things around, it's going to not work anymore. Um, so it's going to be interesting people analyzing how that uh, how that'll work. Um, anything else that we got with it? We got the instruction manual. Yeah, you said that was that's temporary though. Yeah, I don't think I can show off anything in the instruction manual right now because it's not the, the it's not final. really public. Should I toss him? He's being trouble. Yeah, he's all over me. <laughs> I mean, but we'll uh, I can show the front of it goodbye. because they show the front. Say goodbye. This is not the final instruction manual. Bye. Let me move my fingers there. Mm. There you go. Yeah, uh, S. Ramirez says, kind of cool that we all own our personalized carts. They will be like your cart with your number. Each cart is different. Like the actual binary is different mm. for everybody's cart, mm -hmm. uh, for everybody's uh, binary ROM. And it's very similar to how they do the um, cartridges for the Intellivision. The cat <laughs> treats. Maybe that's why they're going nuts. Yeah. Where's my Intellivision cart? Yeah, the LTO flash cart. It's a similar concept, um, a, a little bit different, but a similar concept to the LTO flash cart, where when you buy a game mm. from uh, for your Intellivision, uh, a binary for it, it will only work on this cartridge. Like, mm -hmm. this is my cartridge. They know it's my cartridge. Yeah, because it and links they, up, right? And, they're yeah. like, and when you buy a game, you say, I'm so-and-so, here's my number. And they would encrypt that game for this cartridge only. So it only works it's for like you. It's got like built-in authentication. Right? Yeah. Like, so it's yeah. very similar way they've, they've got it done where the game is encrypted itself with your serial number. Mm -hmm. Will this be available on the new VCS? Uh, I did ask that question. 
Um, they will look into it later, but not <laughs> not, not right away. So they were yeah. talking. I was talking about um, uh, wrapping the game inside an emulator and making it available for other platforms, which is a possibility to do. It's like because some some things have emulators built into them, like uh, Raspberry Pi has uh, an Atari 2600 emulator in it, so you can kind of bundle it for different platforms. Uh, it can't be completely encrypted unless the cartridge includes a huge amount of RAM decode at startup. Well, I don't know. He, he David Crane is an encryption expert, I believe. Yes. So <laughs> I'm know. pretty sure he knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a bit beyond me. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that that there is encryption based on your number. Nathan Sturm was wondering if someone buys the standard version, they wa want to also buy the ROM later. Is that available? Uh, right now, I don't think there's ROM add-ons. There's no ROM standalones. Mm. You can get the ROM with the collector version and the VIP version. But not the standard. But not version. separately and not the standard. Mm. So that's what they're offering right now. Gotcha. They'll probably analyze how the sales are going and maybe offer something in the future. Yeah. That's a standalone or, you know, have it as an add-on. Not sure. It's truly a unique idea. The bridge is the original game developed with modern markets. Yeah. It makes me wonder if other companies would have used the modern tech advances like QR codes if the 2600 was never discontinued. Seeing how it could be advanced is fascinating to me. Yeah, the QR codes was very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so when you submit your high scores, people were speculating yeah. on like, how are they connecting it to the internet? Do they have a Wi-Fi card in there? Yeah. Like, But now it's revealed that it's the QR code that when you're done your game it shows on the screen it identifies you it identifies your score mm. and then you scan it it'll and it pass you, it passes it to the website it passes that information you and your score to the website that's cool. and then registers that high score that way that's and i'm sure cool. that's encrypted too because other people otherwise people could just go oh yeah change yeah. my score my score of 10 to 20 yeah. and then submit my score yeah yeah so yeah. I don't think so. That's very interesting. <laughs> he knows he knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the ROM will only work on emulators that not is not Harmony Encore. Well, Harmony, uh, it works on Stella because Stella has support for the bank switching scheme mm -hmm. that they're using. Um, you can check out the Atari Age forums for a little bit more explanation on the bank switching scheme they're using because it's it's been identified. Um, super banking, I think it is called. 128k super banking mm. as well as a 256 super banking so if you want more details on that but right now the harmony encore does not have support for super banking at 128k um but i don't see a reason why it couldn't if it has the ability like the storage so wasn't there a qr code in the stacks was there <laughs> Was there? I don't uh, think it was a real QR code. Mm. I'd, I'd have to look. Mm -hmm. Super banking is supported by Uno Card and Plus Card. I tried it. It did not work. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not supporting this particular super banking. Gotcha. So I'm sure a couple tweaks and it will be available be, to do it that. Be, it would be possible. Because people would want to play it on you know, their actual hardware. Uh, on an, an actual Atari 2600 mm -hmm. um, through the binary because that's a some people have it set up like I do where it's very convenient to just load it onto an SD card yeah and then you have a whole bunch at, at your disposal too right yeah, yeah. and yeah. The, and the Uno card people are pretty quick with updates updates yeah so I can see it being probably supported on the Uno card followed by the Harmony Encore mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, shortly after mm -hmm. uh, Andrew David working on the I online high scoring system he is it's already working on the uh, plus cart, it has a high score. The binaries are modified for those games okay. so that they talk to the high scoring system when you play those games on the plus cart. Mm -hmm. And you're logged in as you, and it has a Wi Fi on the plus amazing. cart. Yeah. The plus cart is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, definitely take a look into it on the forums, but yeah, it, uh, there is a high score system on yeah. that, which uses a Wi Fi card to register your high score but it also lets you download the game from the internet to play yes to get the high score it's 
crazy. It's amazing. Yeah. By the way, by the way, only one collector's edition per household, please. Yes, please. I I think, I mean, there's always outliers in communities where there's going to be scalpers, yeah. especially on limited things. Mm -hmm. But this community is pretty good about that. Depends I know there's how popular some, it gets, but, uh, some people on the outskirts that are going to be like, always... oh, I'm going to get five of them and then sell it for double for $300 it's after. It's hard to avoid that, but I think, yeah, it also depends on how big the community is for mm -hmm. buying it. So it is. We'll yeah. just see. <laughs> but there's tons of interest in this, and I'd be really interested to see how much support they get yeah yeah for the buying of this game yeah uh, i've played 90 well, maybe not even <laughs> a lot of this game i wouldn't say 90 yeah because i got 61 out of 80 um stars yes so whatever percentage that is <laughs> isn't isn't <clears throat> but there's a lot of bonus things well, that that's, you have to that, find didn't out didn't we like... theorize that there might be more than 80 stars yeah, you might I swear you might I read actually that. be able to go above eighty stars because like there's, there's little stars hidden and bonus things. Oh, in there's there. so many hidden. Yeah. Well, the, as you could see on the screen, I don't want to give any way, thing away no. that I'm not supposed to. But yeah, there's sideshows which Tandy did. Yes. Three. Two. No. Nope. No duck. The duck shoot. I did the gator, gator alley. Gator alley. Oh, and duck clobber, shoot, clobber, clobber the, the clown. clown. So there are three. Not there are, six. No. There are se six. Eight. I thought you said eight. I thought you oh, said eight, but I could be wrong. I but forgot. there's multiple of those little side games, Put it in again. side shows. Um, yeah, I get to play it now. <laughs> are you going to play it? Just for a tiny bit, but I won't reveal anything you didn't. Um, Just to show it? Yeah. Oh, I can show the cartridge now that I did, did the mock cartridge. Section. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's switch back. Oh, we've got the chat here too. Good. How long to beat the game? It's... If you know nothing going into it, like if you watch the stream, you'll know a couple things because Tanya did some things. Well, and, and I was trying to make sure I wasn't going too far. We were practicing yeah. a bit beforehand because I didn't want to be completely useless in front of <laughs> the making. David Crane, Gary Kitchen, and Dan Kitchen. Yeah. Um, especially the Gator, especially given that the Gator mm. sideshow is like the first sideshow you encounter. So here it is. And happens to be Pitfall. Yeah. So, so. playing a Pitfall related game game in front of um, the creator of Pitfall. The creator of Pitfall. It's probably good <laughs> it's to practice little... it a bit. Oh, we didn't show this. Nerve wracking. Oh. <laughs> you I'm wearing. To show the socks. I forgot. We're wearing. I'm wearing freeway socks. Yes. Made by David Crane. Yeah. And Tanya I've is got wearing my Pitfall. Pitfall. Oh, you can see the wait. gators there. We'll switch back. There. Let's... Nope. Show it again. You're asking me. There. Yeah. Woo. So we're anyway, on theme. We're on theme. Freeway socks. Yeah. <laughs> Silly. Silliness. So you can see here it's six sideshows. Six. Okay. Sorry. For some reason I thought yeah. eight, but I was thinking the 80 stars, I think. So, so 80 stars there. Yeah. Uh, your time does elapse while you're on this screen. So yeah. you can't just sit here and pause it. Yeah. Um, there's five keys, uh, five out of maximum seven mm -hmm. lives. Um, no, we don't want to quit. Down, yeah. So that, just everything about this game is so, so, so polished. Oh, yeah. Um, I can turn it up a little bit. There we go. Does just the game have a pause using the switches? I don't think so. I don't think know. So. We haven't tried any of that out, but... Um, no, you're, you're... You play, you, you start, play. you keep going. If you start, you gotta play. Yeah. There's no pausing and cheating and... Yeah. Um, I know you're hurting because I, I got to play for about an hour, an hour and a half straight. So yeah, I know. Even though I couldn't keep going, I wanted to. The controls okay. are smooth and beautiful. Yeah. Like everything about this is yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. And, and there's definitely stuff in here. I don't know how you feel. No, it's yeah, it's back the other way. <laughs> um. Uh, Just want to take a look at it, some it, of the it graphics. It feels really sharp. It and. and yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at the flashing stars. Like, everything's colored so well with yeah. tons of shading. Like, those yeah. are round logs because you can tell because of the shading. The, because of the shading, yeah. And the Grand Prix uh, bushes going by at the bottom, the yeah. round ones. Um, the sunset. Oh, the, so the, the select classic switch. Sunset. David said it would pause with the select switch. Oh. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so if you're on the guide, I guess oh, it pauses. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So there, there essentially is a pause. There is a pause. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very Ramirez. much. Someone was paying more attention than you were. Well, uh, <laughs> I was, you know, doing I was playing. You were once. doing... <laughs> it's always the... the... But I just want to look at this um, truck driving up. So it's a, it's a huge, huge Sprite, right? So watch, watch it drive up. And Beautiful. the other one backs up, It too. backs up at the same time. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then it... And then it parts again. It's gorgeous. And the wheels. There, it's like having a little little interstitial like video in yeah. between. You know, everything pauses and everything moves. Is that black and white mode? Well, if you turn your saturation down, it does on your TV, <laughs> so you can go way back and yeah. pretend you're playing on a 13-inch yeah. black and white television. The only time I see flickers on the cab of the truck and the wheels of the convoy. Yeah, mm -hmm. they've um, there's very little flicker in this game. Like he said, the, the, shooting, I the think. shooting of the bullets, yeah. the information at the top. Um, I don't think this doesn't have any flicker, so this is very, very clean. Um, just the, the writing at the top. a little bit, yeah, yeah. That's it. But during gameplay, no. No, it's very... No. It's super clean. So they've stuck to the aesthetic of Activision, and, I love, I love that right now. which is what made them head and shoulders above yeah. all the other game companies. Yeah. So here's Even the key. look at that key. The key has has shading and color on it. Yeah. It's not just a key. <laughs> yeah. Show that again. What? The truck? Oh, I'm going to use my fuel up and my parachute. So I'll go to the front and uh, I'll get the key first so I can show you. The bomb. I There's a door for the golden key. Yes, which there. I believe you saw me get later on, so it's quite a ways away. Oh, it's so it just yeah. goes to show you that there's it's things huge. to go back for. Yeah, it's not case. linear. It's it's not a linear it's, going in one direction or the other. You might have to double back to get your start. It's, you an, know? it's an adventure. Yeah. And there's the Keystone Capers uh, plane. Oh, now you're just showing. I was so well, nervous I, jumping over anything. I I'm do like, have my patch. <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> There's the switches. I mean, we've seen all oh, this. But, yes, yeah. But You're uh, just, I'm just showing it again slower. A couple of, a couple of things, because you probably have a few things you wanted to, to say about it, too. So. Yeah, mm. just the stuff we've seen. Mm, yeah. Um, and just look at the, the truck, the wheels, mm. the road. The birds flying by. The birds by. flying by. And they're able to do that because they're all on vertical levels. Yes. Um, you're able to do a double, two double sprites on the wheels, so none of that's flickering. Yeah. You're able to do triplicates of the two sprites of the uh, bushes, none of that flickering. The birds are totally separate. Mm -hmm. You can jump as high as the birds on one part. On one part, yeah. But which it's, we didn't but it's show. still only one sprite each, yeah. so there's still no flicker. Oh, it's so nice. I love, I love oh, this button. And, and I, because I wasn't playing, um, where is it? Watch this. There we go. Oh, yeah, I did that once. Did I you? Think. Yeah. You can kind of get caught on There's a, a way to get caught indefinitely. Really? Yeah. Oh, walk through the hat. What? Ah, oh, I didn't, that's the first time I've been able to do that. Oh, that, yeah, that usually is not something that can happen. <laughs> I think you have to get caught first. Mmm. Ah. Mm. Even if you just, oh, I can't stay up though. I thought I had it at a point where I could be jumping indefinitely, but I guess not. There oh, it is. There, oh, there. Oh, well, you can jump for a bit. Anyway, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the game screen is slightly offset to the right to hide the H move bars. I am, typical Activision fashion. As it well. is. It is. There's yeah. there's a bar down the right. Mm. It's just a bunch. Yeah. I mean, all the stylings of old Activision games are there. So here's the parachute. Glide you back <laughs> over. Yeah. Now I'm gonna open up this. Well, I, I did you or did I you didn't not? open up this one. Okay. Um, did you open up the other one? Yes. Oh, okay. Because so. I needed you to keep going. So. Well, I'll just show this. <laughs> He's like, let me show you all you the stuff. You can get the gun early. Actually, I did show this. I did oh, show did this. You? Yeah, after. Oh, okay. After I was I was told not to keep going, I went back and I did get the bug. Cancel the sales. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, no. it doesn't really affect anything. It's just a fun. Yeah. I mean the bu bunnies don't kill you anyway. <laughs> no, I like that they don't kill you. Actually, you can just bounce around off them. Um, yeah, ev everything's just so gorgeous yeah. in this game. The mountains in the background. 
just the small touches of the chameleon. Now you can see why it's 128k. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot in here. But I, I was surprised to hear that it only used the 128 bytes of memory because there's a lot of stuff like your inventory um the status of all the sideshows mm. are in there your elapsed time the number of stars you have the number of lives you have the key the keys you have um uh where you are um there's a there's a lot to say but you know what to do <laughs> Does give you a hint. And yeah, I did that's show the shading. That. Did the you, shading. Did you yeah. show that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. So it does give you a bit of a hint of where you can place things. Um, so I'll show off the truck again. Um, I've, got enough, truck? I've got enough fuel. Yeah. Truck driving. Oh, bring it back. Oh, there we go. That guy, man. That, that plane skull. Um, sounds from River Raid. Uh, how do you access the inventory when you're doing the slide move earlier? Well, this the moving and down is the slide. Yeah. It, it, it's a little tricky, too, because sometimes... Oh, to get the inventory, you press down and the, and button. the button. Yeah, we didn't go over that. No. Um, and down then, and the button. Then you get to select all the different yeah. things. If you go up, it gets you out of the inventory. So. Oh, if you're holding something, like the parachute, you press up and the button to cancel it. Yes. And also, if you're in the inventory, you don't have to pick something. You can just go back up, and it gets you out of the inventory. Oh, so button. you Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll show the truck again. Ready? Everybody? Ready? Nice. I don't know if that's... Oh, I did the parachute. Because <laughs> um, now I have to use the parachute. But that's okay. I'm just playing around. Yeah. I don't know if it's... I think he was wanting to see it again to see if it moves in four pixel chunks. Oh. Like if it's play field moving. Yeah. Uh, it was very smooth and fast, so it, it was hard to tell. You'd have to replay it mm. frame by frame. Yeah, I agree. Soundtrack 78. I like the way his belt and headband, fl headband flutter in the oh, wind. Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. It just adds that little bit of extra uh, detail yep. to that character. So that, that things character. are moving. Yeah. And you can tell that, you know, he's Andre the Magnificent, you know? Oh. I like the flipping Meow. over death. <laughs> no, it looks so good. And there's very tricky ways of, like... There's different levels to these. Yeah. Like each of those logs is a level. Up I was here. going to do something sneaky, and James said no. So I we figured no, we figured no. out a trick, but we're you know I I think um, we can't don't want to give away. No. How we don't to do give, things? Give things away. It's 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 hard to not. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's like oh, I want to play it more. Yeah. 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 You. Can you bomb the bunnies? Oh, so so one thing is, if you can't use it, you can't use it. No. So you can pick the bomb. But it won't let you do it here. And I was fooling around going backwards on the convoy at towards the end when I stopped. Go, keep, I, I decided to not keep going. Well, I saw you use a bomb. I was trying to use the bombs, um, but you can't. So if you can't use the bomb, you can't use the bomb. Um, hitting the button will make you jump instead of deploy the object. Okay. If he resets. Oh, he does reset. <gasps> he does. Well, there you go. Now we know. He does kill you if you get too close. If you if you run directly into him, he'll bite you. Yeah, he will <laughs> kill you. But then when he's low enough, because oh. like if you press here, the like you just press the button for the item to take effect. Yeah. There's a free map. Yeah. Those guys. Was it? Oh, they wanted you to show touching them. Touching them because there's a little story. Oh, you never, can. You can jump over them. Yeah, because they showed that in the trailer and like I've never jumped over those. They're too too scary. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Usually yeah. I go along the top. The run and the slide. It's a good skilled master. Anyway, that this shoot is so fun. I just want to show them the bomb. I was bomb so upset did. I I didn't quite get. To See now I've used the key. I can't. Open it. Yeah. Oh, here's here's this. So yeah. I'll show you what that does. So if I go, oh, it won't let you do it anywhere, but oh, where I'm, you can I'm do not it. Not on the bomb again. No. There we go. There. So it's like okay, you can bomb it, but you have to put it. You there. have to put it there, yeah. But it's cool. It's like a little shaded, mm -hmm. shaded thing. Canadian, Canadian tele, um, 
Tenor says, are there multiple difficulty levels? Nope. 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 It is what it is. It is what it's it is. It's the game. It's uh, difficult enough. <laughs> it gets harder as you go, too. Um, oh, yeah. We kind of stop at... You'll the, be playing the this... obstacles get harder and harder as you go. There's no save points? No. Unless you play your ROM well, on... Well, when you die, on... you end up at the, f the last, either the front or the back of that particular convoy of trucks. So the last one you jumped to is where you start over. Well, you probably noticed that, but... Yeah. Um, we'll have yeah. Ooh, big jump. Flip. Clown. Mm -hmm. uh, replay value? Uh, pretty good. There's always a lot of stuff to find. Yeah, there is. Um, I made a map. <laughs> Of, of course. The, of it. Yeah. Because um, it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. I, th I, there's multiple ways of doing things in this game. Yes. Um, so. Yes. I yeah. think the replay value will come into effect on how you do things yeah. and in what order. Because again, there is one tricky thing that I didn't show. James figured it out, but in a completely different way than I did. Yeah. So hers so. was better, actually. <laughs> it's a lot safer. Yeah. Um, but, but you can do things multiple ways. And and like they said, there's the speed running aspect of yeah. it. Um, Just because getting through. There's different ways to get to different trucks yeah. and to get things in different orders. You can screw yourself yeah. if you do it wrong. If you use up <laughs> something and you can't get it back, then you're done. Well, to win, you need 80 stars. I think. I've never won. <laughs> so I've never actually completed this game. Only by dying. So... Is that a little shake? I see something. Sorry, I'm like beta testing it still. <laughs> I thought I like fell and it shook. I noticed, but not really. Yeah, maybe it was my small. eyes. How, how do you know if you have won? Is there an end screen? I mean, there might be. Might be. We haven't been there yet, so. Yeah. And we're not going to show it off. Yeah. I still don't know how to do it. And there's also the six sidecars, so maybe one of them is the end screen. Could be. Yeah. And uh, side shows, Retro sorry. Game Nets. I love how they have a count up timer for speedrunners. Another innovation of the classic meeting the modern real thinkers. So yeah. if you die, uh, it should stop that timer, right? To that guy. Oh, I could, yeah. That's a fast way to die. <laughs> Hello, missed interview. Oh, you can rewind uh, the stream? Uh, yeah. Well, it'll be on, on Twitch, Twitch right away, right? Yeah, you can rewind on Twitch. You can, you can watch it. Before. So you should be able to go to your status screen from here. There, there it you is. Go. So the timer stops. So when you speed die, run die. or yeah. win. So speedrunners will be like, there it is. There's my time. That's true. With 80 out of 80 stars. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, you didn't have to go through all your lives for me. Well, we're not, we showed, I can't show anymore. So <laughs> you know, we'll have to YouTube tomorrow. Looked from the trailer, there's a bad guy you're ultimately trying to catch up. That's one part of it. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, I, I won't We say haven't anything. gotten I to the end. I can't tell you anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to give away too much, so yeah. that's fair. Oh, thank you, Canadian Tenor, for subscribing. Yes. Oh, I have my sound off, because... Because of things. There we go. A lot of interfering things yeah, happening all at once. Yeah, a lot of interfering things. Um... I can't really show you guys anything anymore than what we've already shown, so you can't really request us to show you things. <laughs> so eh, I think we'll wrap it up. Uh, and what date did he say? The 22nd, 22nd? I think. 22nd? March, that's, that's, uh, you probably might have to go back th through it, yeah. but I think he said March 22nd for the first, the shipping date is the earliest shipping date, if I'm not mistaken. So on that day, we will be doing a playthrough. Of this game. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Week week of the 22nd. Ah. Thank you, Doug the Devil, for watching. Uh, week of the 22nd. Week of the 22nd. Two people said that. Okay. Week. Okay. Not the day of. Okay, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yep. Classic scrolling on the bottom of Audacity Games. Yes. 2020. Well, 2021. <laughs> but this is the actual ROM, so I think it's going to be it's still 2020. 2020. Yep. Um, what else? That's it. Let's see what uh, what shows we have coming up. I'm gonna have to schedule this in there. Like, we'll figure it full out. Full playthrough yeah. of Circus Convoy. We'll just be waiting for everyone to announce that that their games have shipped, or their game has shipped, or their collector's edition has shipped. 
Yeah. And then we'll just play it the next the next uh, day. That's really loud. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit too loud. Yes. Um. So let me look up our schedule, and I'm gonna thank everybody. Yes. For watching. Yes. And subscribing. And we'll go through some names here. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, Soundtrack78. Yeah. When your game ships, if you have collectors... Oh, that's true. Well, I'll be buying one. The big one. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you, uh, Retro Game Net, Jerry Gray West, SMRS 2008, Soundtrack, Doug the Devil, Atari 2600 Dude, uh, Anthony Nelms. Crossbow, That's Vitoko, okay. Canadian yeah. Tenor. Yeah, Great Offenders in there. Kaboomer AA. Uh, Scrolling up. There are a lot of names popping up, and we could not keep our eyes on no. the chat. So. No. Old Head Plays, Colonel Lama. Retro Game Net. RC70. Yeah. Alma Fur. Dan ABC. Artist. Kev Kelly. Leo the Low. Chives Winston. Vector Man Zero. A lot of names I haven't read before, which Atari. is really cool. Yeah, Atari Kid 81. So we play twice a week games yeah. here. So it's 2,600 games and 7,800. Yeah. So if you like this, you'll like the rest of it. Nice. Mac Daddy Elite. Um, Spindly 1970. Tim Tiny Arcade. Arcade. Yeah. Lots of names. Lunar 7. <laughs> Trek MD. I don't know if I'm repeating. And that's the top. Carl G. Nathan Strum. Lots of people, yes. and I don't know how many people watch today, but I'm pretty sure it set a record. That's for sure. Mr. Z Mr. Zarny Whoop AA. <laughs> uh, oh. You rolled with the unexpected cats. twists and made for a good stream. Yeah. No technical problems, as far as I know. No, I mean other than the the camera. I was very kind careful. Of, I had to turn it back on at one yeah. point. That was the most that happened. That's nothing. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> Over 160 at peak. Really? Oh, that's that's, that's great. really nice to hear. I can actually tell you exactly <laughs> how many people watched at peak. Let's see. Oh. 171. Wow. Max viewers. Yep. Wow, that's pretty high. That is, that's a big, some big numbers. 108 there. unique chatters. That's, that's probably four times the number of people <laughs> who are normally yeah. in the chat. Yeah. What a great show. And, and, and thank you so much, um, for everyone who joined us too yeah so yeah. all the people who don't normally join us yeah um and watch for this one yeah. this is this is what we do we play new games on classic consoles that's right um not the old ones but the brand new games and there's amazing ones and there are a lot of people really dedicated and really get and really enjoy making games oh for yeah those old systems huge so. community including spiceware who just jumped in <laughs> typed something so no, he, i think he was here the whole time nice but uh a lot of these people are the developers and we play their games yes and uh you get to interact with them ask some questions just like this yes and uh we do interviews like this uh once in a while as well and we have mm -hmm. one coming up bob de mm -hmm. who uh programs for the 7800 he play, makes a lot of pac-man games yes but he's made some really incredible runs uh, uh lately um so we're going to be talking with him about all his games mid next month probably um most likely mid-april so i can calm down from this because it takes a lot of prep yeah. obviously pac-man plus in the atari age forums mm -hmm. yeah yeah i got to meet him we got to meet him last time like he kind of was hanging around it i didn't really know him at the time because i wasn't really into the 7800 scene yeah but I, I did actually get him on camera and talking yeah. during our walkthrough of the Atari Age uh, booth. booth. Yeah. Either the last one we went to I, or I the one before. The last one. I do remember, I do remember in, yeah. interviewing him. So. Hey, DNS Debro. Yeah. Another Atari Age person. Uh, we're going to be doing a Dragonfly Cart special mm -hmm. on our next show. Uh, unless uh, somebody tells me otherwise, because okay. uh, they're not done with EXO. Um, but that is a brand <laughs> new cartridge. That's for your 7800, and I finally got mine, so we're going to be playing all the, the big games on it that uh, utilize the extra sound cards, Excellent. Uh, sound chips in so it. So you can really show them off. Really completely yeah. experience it. EXO yeah. doesn't even run on the other one yet. Okay. So I have to use the Dragon gotcha. 5 for that. Yeah. It was at 2019. Okay, so yeah, we probably we probably saw him there. Yeah, I, re I remember yeah. that. Yeah. So I didn't really know him. So next time we'll go there. We're 
we'll run into him and, and talk with him there as well because yeah. yeah, we'll, we'll know him. Yeah. But we'll be talking with him mm -hmm. in a couple weeks on the show. Uh, then we're going to be playing some 2600 games on the 19th. Then back to 7,800 games, Cosmic Cabbie, Worm, Dungeon Stalker, Wizard's Dungeon, which is a great game. There's a huge update for that, so be playing that. And, uh, yeah, some other stuff. We'll play Dan Kitchen's game when he's ready with that in the summer, in a couple months. Um, we'll probably be beta testing that <laughs> soon. Exciting uh, for, excited mm -hmm, for that Very one excited too. for that. Yeah. Uh, EXO does look good. Yeah, it's... it's a, wonderful cave space shooter mm -hmm. cave shooter because you're not in space so mm -hmm. cave shooter um so uh i want to thank all the subscribers uh let me get an updated list of that yeah i feel like a few people subscribed i think <laughs> over the course did. of the show oh, they did so yeah it'll be good to get an updated yeah list of that I'll grab, right get now. that quickly i'm gonna be reading it off a side oh actually i could just paste it into here and read it off here. So I'm not looking to the side. Need to play the latest build of Wizard's Dungeon. Yes. Oh. Thank you for following. Old school. 70. Thank you so much for following. Uh, slowed that up. Sorted in alphabetical order. Boom. Copy it over. You missed one at the bottom. That's me. Ah. I don't need to say my name. <laughs> <laughs> I guess zero page is always great for being at the bottom of the list. So. It is. It's awesome, actually. It's very, very convenient. I would just skip my name if it wasn't like that. Okay. Here we go. Because usually at the top of the show, I read out the subscribers' names. But, you know, not this week. Not I didn't this really want to leave uh, David Crane and Gary and Dan waiting <laughs> <laughs> while I read out uh, a ton of names. But... Um, wanted to get to them right away because they were waiting in the zoom mm -hmm. this will be up on youtube at 4 p.m tomorrow it's 24 hours from broadcasts because of rules <laughs> <laughs> yep because of subscriber rules yeah um i want to thank uh, the subscribers who support the show 8-bit swami al nefer armscar coder cafe man 2d canadian tenor catalogs charles and check coconut dnoid dan abc drexel great offender gretams ground trooper johnny wc yawan Urado, carl g kev kelly Kai Gandor, Leo the Low, Mark Space Inc., Metal Atari, Mick Muse, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Muddy. Oh, somebody else in there. Mr. Zarner Whoopa, and then Muddy Funster. See, that's why I say them in order, because I'm yeah. very used to it. Nathan Strum, Pack Rat VG, Kohog RC70, Repentless VG, Ricardo Pym, Six Sweet, Smitty B, Socrates, Spiceware, S. Ramirez, Stephen A., The D Train, Welshman, Tiki Dan K, which is Dan Kitchen. Yeah. He uh, he subscribes to the show. Yeah. He's and has forever. Has for a very long time, which uh, is lovely. Yeah. Teetfos and Trek MD, and you can support it as well by clicking on something in your Amazon Prime and linking it to your Twitch Prime, mm -hmm. and click subscribe. And make sure you follow us on all the things, on the YouTubes, on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, because you'll be notified of things like this, and follow this as mm -hmm. well on Twitch. Because a bunch of people followed this, so they would be alerted when this came on. So it's a good way to know when the show is on. That's right. Uh, yeah, Twitch rule. Yeah, be posted to YouTube. So 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, same time this show started. And it does look better on YouTube because it handles 60 frames a second better. Mm -hmm. Not that there was a lot of 60 frames in that game. There's some. But like um, uh, Dan... Uh, Dan Crane. Uh, Dan, Dan Crane. Dan Crane. What are them? A long mix and match. Episode. <laughs> yeah. Mix and match in the news. David Crane said yeah. uh, the Twitch flicker wasn't. It Twitch doesn't handle it as well. The encoding yeah. of it, or the um, whatever it uses to do that. So YouTube handles it better. So it looks a little bit better on YouTube. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. We've taken enough of your time up, and we'll be back to regular broadcasting schedule on Tuesday. Yes. That's when we'll be back. So have a wonderful weekend, and thanks for hanging out with us. Yes. Uh, it was a blast. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> glad it uh, turned out really well. Yeah. Hopefully it was enjoyable for yes. everybody out there. Yes. So have a great weekend. Yes. See you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.